The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Learn how you can earn up to three times the points on travel and more with the flagship credit card at NavyFederal.org. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. Hey, if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow us on social media, team underscore never quit. You can follow Marcus, follow myself, Morgan, all of us, Melanie. Everybody's got something going on, so you can keep up with us, what we've got going on. We've got a killer episode for you guys, but we like to kick things off. Well, you know what? We might skip the Patreon question of the day, because I think we have like a thousand questions. Why? All right. All right. Just I'll do it. Patreon. All right. Uh, what was the first concert you ever attended? <gasps> New Kids on the Block. Whoa. Yeah. How one. was it? How yeah. old were you? You know what? I don't know if it was New Kids on the Block or Debbie Gibson. It was the same time period, and I don't remember which one was actually first. Yeah. So um, I would have gone to hell if I went to that. <laughs> Someone was uh, um, DC Talk, which was a Christian rap, nice. rap band, and uh, Michael W. Smith. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. the kind of concerts I was supposed to be going to. So I was at a <laughs> Christian school, um, but I, uh, yeah, mine were New Kids on the Block. God, yeah. and w. You're Gibson. so much cooler than me. <laughs> I would have done anything to do that, but instead. Yeah, my mom was um, Millie Vanilli, and <laughs> dude, who was with, who opened for them? It was uh, That's a pretty good one. It was. This is when they were really good, too. I saw a meme Whatever today, that means. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> I, saw I don't know that, that, that those two yeah. things go together like we talked yeah. about. Yeah, so I had uh, Boomers. You know yeah. who Millie Vanilli is. Everyone else just Google him. Right. Just Google well, him. And I saw a meme today that said, um, it had a picture of Millie Vanilli looking really sad. And it said, whatever year that was, um, gets in trouble for lip syncing the songs. And then it has today's TikTokers and says, makes millions yeah. off of <laughs> lip syncing the songs. That's the truth. <laughs> the irony. Right. I think D Mob was there. Mine was, was, mine was also a Christian concert. Terrifying artist, actually. Carmen. Oh, I remember Carmen. I can still do like the mimes thing when he was like fighting the devil. Dude, those were some. Like, if you watch the music video of some creepy. of those, they're creepy. Yeah. Very, very creepy. Never Today, heard of Carmen. Good. It's good. creepy. Yeah. My mom would not Cultish. let me not listen to Christian music growing up, but then I slowly phased into bad stuff. But you know, yeah. Christian music was like all I was allowed. KSBJ, which is like the Houston Christian station. The like, drama class that I was in, we recreated multiple <laughs> Carmen, Carmen skits music. with the white mime face yeah. paint and then this was that big yeah. one when he had the movie that came out at the same time right. Gosh, was it called terrible. like champion or champion that's it oh it was weird never heard of I never, yeah, I didn't get that watch one. the music videos later it'll no, creep don't, you out don't yeah, do well, it don't let children see it do it <laughs> they're terrible it really is what a great you gotta use that reverse stuff question. around here man like everybody Ooh. watch it Watch yeah. it. Nobody watched it. It freaked me out. I've watched it as an adult to just like see if I was just like a kid freaked out. No, yeah, it's no, terrifying. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. John, what about you? Uh, first concert, I had went to one of those Michael W. Smith DC mm. talk shows as well. Uh, My Kate. church almost split over Amy Grant. Oh, no. Oh, I yeah. went to an Amy Grant concert too. It was, was around really the same good. time period. She was really so good. Talented. It was at the Woodlands Pavilion. All of us church folk. I feel like I don't belong yeah. in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus did not. I just, want real outside, music. Yeah. I just want real musicians again. I yes. went and saw the. My, I took my wife on a date last night, and we saw the new Elvis musical. Oh, and was it had it called, at a movie theater. It's, yeah, it's called Elvis, and it. You know, he's surrounded by Aretha Franklin and BB King. I miss her both. Uh, yeah, okay. and I mean, I, real musicians yeah, yeah. to include Elvis, who is a real musician yeah. and an entertainer. And then, and then we're driving in the car from the movie theater back home, and we're just like. Uh, scan, scan, yeah, scan, because it was just li literally trash. Mm -hmm. Every single song was a remix of something. No, nothing original. No yeah. real musicians, and uh, and I just wanted to pull my eyes out. Aww. So it's happened to the movies too. Yeah, have you noticed that? Yeah, like they start even the ones they're trying to redo. They just is that this disastrous? But what? I like the new Top Gun. I well, really we can get do. into that. I, have I you really seen it? Do. I have. You have. Yeah. You don't like it? No, I want to be a pilot. I, I would like right, to say the first one got me like that. Yeah. Too. I mean, like I was. I, was I would like, never I say I want to be in the Navy, dude. I had an F-18 model. I would drive right yeah. the yard with it, dude. And I was the same way. I haven't seen it yet, but I've talked to like JT and a couple of the hardcore pilots, man. And all of them said, you know, Whiz. it was pretty. It's pretty. Oh, yeah, good. Whiz. I would yeah. like 
blow all the dudes needed, whatever it has to happen to make it into the Navy, I would do Just, that. Oh, is that good? Yeah, it was that, that was good. Did to Tom Cruise save aviator. America? He yeah, did. I think he, he saved America. It's really yeah. good, babe. <laughs> Thank I you, Tom. I'm telling you, you need to go see it. I will. And he also like was going to sacrifice himself in a moment of selflessness that was not very He would do that. Tom Cruise would. Yeah. See the new Bob Hope? I don't. I think so. Maybe. Man, he, he's been <laughs> saying a lot of things and going back to some older interviews where he was talking about like kids and the, the the dangerous direction that young men are going and the lack of and, and Ritalin and AGHD and like all there's some some interviews where at the time he sounded like a crazy person and now you go back to like 2015 and 2016 and 2017 you're like oh man that guy was calling it yeah he knew some stuff we didn't yeah so ahead of the times yeah mm-hmm. thank you Tom and he's also frozen in time <laughs> he cast he really that's the weirdest is. thing people don't understand that you man that dude, I mean has frozen how, how do you do this. I don't, I don't know. know the silent don't. Scientology thing really freaks me out. Um, but that aside, everybody's got something that makes them majestic. Yeah, you know, he, freaking different. <laughs> however you want to mysterious. He, he looks right, as good. Freaking mysterious. He, he looks as good. Exact same. Yeah, and then um, Which Kelly branch? McGillis. Yeah. Was she in there? She was not. She could not. She not. Oh no! Really? No. Oh no! 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 no. Age has not been kind so to her. <laughs> she he, is not. He, okay, so he actually got bit by Brad Pitt. Then. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And <laughs> that's what happened. Val Kilmer was in it, and um, they had to do a lot of magic, Hollywood magic, just to make him even be able to be on screen. And then there's just like Tom Cruise walking around, flirting with whatever that young girl. Yeah, the I don't general's know, daughter. I'm really bad at names, but um, from the general's daughter movie. No, so in the original, they made a a joke about him hooking up with the admiral's daughter. Oh, oh Peggy Benjamin. Yeah, Peggy's actually in this one. Come on. Yes. Yeah. But, they thought of everything, and she is gorgeous. She is. She is also frozen. You get to see time. her. Mm-hmm. You get the reason to see for the flyby. Yeah, the reason yeah. for the flyby. Oh, I need to go see. And this it thing. is worth I'm it. I'm telling you. I've been telling you. I seriously this. want to join the Navy. <laughs> and they're hurting for recruits right now. So I heard that. <laughs> yeah, if they take like, <laughs> like a going. So you think it's going to be one of those deals? Remember when we when we got dropped into the fight? All the nom guys were like, "I'm coming." Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. You need me? We're like. No, but, no. I, <laughs> but we might. If, but I might. You know, we I, might. Like, this no, keeps I, going this way. And I Russia's like, there, all right, yeah, like, we want to not just have you. Because everyone was showing oh, up. Yeah, everybody. Oh yeah. my gosh, it was great. Nine eleven. We first started. Yeah, not dude. I was at the recruiter's office on nine eleven, and there were sixty year old men with their Vietnam hats. Oh, well, I guess they'd be forty at the time. Yeah, with their Vietnam hats on. So that's us. Yeah, I can that's understand us. that now. When they're don't like, say that. I'm, yeah, bro, I'm don't say that. So sad. <laughs> hey, cut that part We're out. We're talking about editing. <laughs> <laughs> we look good though. We age, yeah. age like has I, aged well. Well, that's the thing. It's like it's not. It's not the gear model, man. It's the mileage on the side. Okay. I, we we put some mileage on. Someone told me that on. the other day, bro, and I hadn't thought about it like that. And you know, again, you run across one of us, or like they'll say something like, "Bro, you know how much I needed to hear that." Yeah. We run hard in the paint. Oh, There's man, not I, a single I, moment where we're kind to our bodies, we're kind to our brains, we're kind to a single inch of our body. We're just like. Fuck yeah. that body. Okay, so the part that got blanked out in the beginning of training when you hear the old crusty master chiefs and sergeant saying, Hey, don't you know we're ear pro so you don't go deaf. Yeah. You're like, fuck you. Yeah, you know, I'm I, fine. I'm gonna go deaf. What are you even talking about? What do you know? I can't hear anything, dude. Yeah. You know? I had two trips where I didn't wear ear pro in combat. Like nothing. Because I wanted to hear what what was going on, you know? Oh I want to hear the I want to well, hear yeah, the safety selector well, you go can, click. Yeah. But now I can't hear that click. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. What do you say? You can hear the doorbell. <laughs> no. That's crazy. Okay, so that was Patreon question. Yeah, that was cool. I'm that was sorry, really good. No, I like I liked yeah, that yeah. rabbit. I was a good rabbit yeah, hole. Good Sometimes <laughs> it's necessary. All right. Hey, we are joined <laughs> today funny, by Tim Kennedy. He's an entrepreneur, New York Times best-selling author, Jillian Jitsu black belt, UFC fighter, Green Beret sniper, TV host, speaker. It's a mouthful. I mean, the list is extensive, and you probably didn't really need this introduction. I'd say to most of our listeners probably know your yes. story. Mm-hmm. We've had you back on in 2017, so five years into the future. And you're still kicking ass, yeah. still doing stuff. Welcome back. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I don't want to leave this land. <laughs> you're, get off my land, Tim. Get off my land. I forgot about how long we, all the stuff that's happened. Since a lot's been going on. Started We're just a couple of busy bees. Yeah. Marcus has got some rapid fire questions for you today. Oh, you want to do those? Oh, yeah. All right. We've been oh cooking up some fun stuff. <laughs> Bro, I found out he's coming out here, man. I, started, I was like, some of them you, he probably can't answer because it's like those um, when you're like signing up for something to ask you the five questions. Yeah, I know some of them are hard, but that's all right. It's okay. You can pass. You can do a, you can do a yeah, pass. Like, I feel like it's yeah. those questions. Well, but you know, we got to change it up because you know, you've been yeah. really good at those questions because we get asked them lots of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what street did you grow up on as a kid? Like, yeah, I can spell oh, that, that one already because I use it as a password. <laughs> 
I don't. Well, know. I had a buddy of mine grew up on <laughs> on uh, eucalyptus and chrysanthemum. He's like, try to spell that when you're a kid. Chrysanthemum. Those are which two tree? tough ones. Yeah. Yeah. Chrysanthemum. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Okay, your birthday. Okay, September first. Nice. Best day of the li- best best day of the year. What year? Oh, I can't tell you that. Not on the radio. Yeah. All right. My date of birth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Social. <laughs> yeah. On, on, I was uh, just born in a month. I'm you, I like you can't. So Twitter made me. Twitter, okay, wait, <laughs> Instagram. Hold on. Why don't we erase the September first? If he, if Mark no, is wanting to know the. That, no, that's, that's, that's it was, it was just okay. a question. I, if you don't it's want to answer, it's fine. Skip. Say pass. Okay. Say pass. Okay. It's a game show. Say pass. It's a game show. Full name. Timothy Fred Kennedy. Is it Frederick? Nope, just Fred. Because you could pull Frederick off right now with the. I know, I know the the guy Fox look. This is just I'm moving into an election, you know, and I'm I'm going with the full anti-establishment. I'm not going to blow up anything, but the guy Fox. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's different because you actually have those skills, yeah. as opposed to trying. Yeah, to... Yeah, I could I could blow. I could definitely blow up stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, but you won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I am for peaceful right. protests. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Disclaimer. That's the difference between us. <laughs> People understand there's other idiots out there tearing out. stuff down. I was like, yeah. we can be just as bad as them. Yeah, we, we're just worse. on the good side. We just happen to be on this side, on our side. But barely. But barely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, and we look at that line very judiciously and be like, edge walkers all the way. There's got to be a connection between the two. Who do you think hangs out there? That's us. Yeah. Yes. That was why it was so much fun. <laughs> all right. Parents' name. Parents' name, Michael and Paula. Middle name of theirs, yeah. Michael Evers and Paula Lorraine. Talk about them for a second. What kind of how was you popped? <laughs> so you had an awesome dad. So, I, I mean, it's kind of a trick question. You yeah. can talk about him for a whole show. I, I could, I could also talk to my, my mom for forever. They were both like polar opposite humans. My dad was this, this power suit, power tie, narcotics officer, stole planes full of cocaine from Pablo Escobar. He was one of the first guys that would sneak into a meth lab and plant surreptitious cameras to figure out how to cook meth. So then they could recreate how to cook meth with other ingredients to then prohibit and, and, and change the laws so you could only buy so much of certain, the reason like you can't go, that is exactly why oh is because gosh. of my dad. That is so funny. Yeah. So what's your he granddad do? My dad was a chemist, or oh, my you, granddad was a chemist. Oh, wow. Yahtzee. Well, it's all yeah, making sense, crazy. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the other alive? one, both, no, no, no. Both my grandparents are dead and they're greatest generation. Um, You know, like one war. They were on, cool, man. Oh, yeah. I, that, that was, we had those too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It was so much fun to go visit them. It's like every time you went there was such an adventure, no matter what we yep. did. But yeah. And any pre 9-11, when I was a, a true dirtbag, going to my grandpa's hey. was like as the patriarch of of kind of the family, he was the place where I could reevaluate everything. Like I could just tell him everything. You know, he What lived, is that? I, I, don't know. I have the same way with my dad too, I, but the, it's the same lineage, right? Yep. It's on that pass down, and I didn't realize my dad was cool till he died. Granddad, yeah. yeah. My grandfather loved them dudes, man. Yeah. It's just you just could tell him anything, yeah, whatever anything. came out of their no mouth. No judgment, and he'd be like, oh, yeah. and what, what they said was short and sweet. Yeah. He'd be like, man, that was thank you. I tell him thank about you, a grandma. problem with a woman. He's like, well, well, <laughs> I took I took axe with grease and I covered my face and I scaled a a, a fence so I could get to your grandma. Yep. Oh, What's up? Oh my God! True love, my man. <laughs> My man. How sweet. So it's yeah. a competition. Yeah. <laughs> okay, check. All yeah. right, we're good. They're good. Uh, okay, I, so what did your mom do? So my mom was marriage counselor, piano teacher, the antithesis, if like the spectrum of, of human Oh, existence. like a lady? She yeah. was this do everything proper, proper yeah. liberally educated, you know, would, you know, she got us the box tickets at the San Francisco Symphony at the Davies Hall. My dad's like, no, you're going to go to boxing and you're going to go to wrestling. And my mom's like, no, we're going to go to the ballet. You're definitely in hybrid. Yeah. You're a hybrid maid too. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's man. awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. That's good stuff. Unless she tries to put you in a tutu. Yeah. <laughs> you got any siblings? <laughs> oh yeah. They're both badasses. Are they? Yeah. Younger, older? Old older older brother, younger sister. I'm the middle child. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Brothers at FBI bomb tech. Yeah. Th- that See, little man, group. those dudes, that's different altogether. Yeah. We got some of them running around here. I mean, I love don't get me wrong, I love them to death. That I don't want to so do good it. Ha- no. It's a little crazy. What's your yeah. sister do? So my, my sister now is is a amazing mom and homeschooler. Um, her husband, she married my best friend from high school who was adopted. And uh, he works for the Department of Energy protecting nuclear stuff. Um, so she married a gangster too. That's so and he's awesome. a total, like, first time he got drunk, my fault. First time he ever got kicked <laughs> out of the house, my fault. Like you know, yeah. 
<laughs> I brought him on my, all my hood rat stuff. So then when he married your sister, you're like, okay, none of that. No, no. So <laughs> my parents were out of town and we get a knock at the door late at night with two cops with Chad by the scruff of his neck being held by these police officers. And they're like, uh, hey, this, uh, this fellow is trying to crawl into your window mm. and i was like <laughs> chad you can come over anytime like my house was the place to go to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're having problems go to tim's house like you need to, anything to go to tim's house and and he had just left he's hanging out and, and i was like why don't you just like knock on the front door dummy and uh, he's like uh he won't like even make eye contact with me oh and my, my brother gosh. i think i was, I was 16 and uh, my brother's 18 my brother's like uh officer what what window sir and he's like well that one right there and i was like that's my sister's window, dummy. You're like, what window? <laughs> oh, it's my sister's window. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. Come on oh in, bud. God. Come on in. Yeah. It's trying to be tactical. That. Yeah. To be <laughs> <laughs> the only Asian dude in the whole entire city, and he's adopted. Yeah. 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 You know, I was just so trying to make story. it exciting. Yeah. I, you know, come up with something, man. You spiced it up. Dude. Oh, my God. That's a thing. I love that. So your parents are proud. Oh, they're, yeah. My parents are amazing. Now they're you know the farmers we got just. Do they live in Texas too? I wish they're still Where in they California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they are in this militant Central Coast that is surrounded by these big, huge, populated cities. It's an hour and a half to get to the next city, and it's a uh, out. It's a fifty-minute drive to the next stoplight. Mm -hmm. And oh, the country California. Yeah, yeah. Check. All land. You know, like all I did was fix Bob wire and, and fight, fight Mexicans and throw bays oh of hail. Like that's yeah. all we did. There's nothing That's where else you to grew do. Up? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you had an early introduction to violence. I oh, was yeah. listening to your interview with uh, Nick Bear, and you were talking about some of those stories. Well, I mean, this, this is country like, kids, though. This is crazy. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but unless you're a country kid, like you fought. Yeah. You know, like I don't want to throw the you throw the hay. He's like, no, you lost rock paper per scissors. Yeah. I'm gonna go clean the dent drainage ditches. You go throw hay, and it's like, no, ha! and you fight. Like that's just the way it works, and you're eight. Oh my god! Yeah, here's you get a wild child, you put them outside with a wild animal, right. settle their asses down. That's it. Then They'll figure count. it out. And all the fights that we had in school, we always get suspended for a few days. But then best buddies because we go fish in or do something yeah. like that, just get it out of the way. Yeah, Lori, Lori LeCarrie. That's why everybody's killing each other these days, carrying them pistols, man, because they yeah. won't let them whip each other's ass. Just Listen, let them whip, whip each other's dude. ass. It fixes everything. It fixes everything. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so I follow you on um, Instagram and everything, mm -hmm. and I saw that you're doing the, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Apogee School. That's it. You pronounced it perfectly. Um, does your sister do that with her kids? Um, she does do Socratic learning. So Apogee, Acton, Founders, they're all... Um, from like the Socrates approach to education, which is the Socratic, which is a learner driven environment. So instead of like having a teacher with a dry erase board lecturing at a kid sitting in a seat, instead the guide, which is the teacher, Socrates and Aristotle. They, yeah, the Stoics. Yeah, they consider themselves guides. So like they were the bumpers and they were trying to keep something, somebody in a, asking all the questions to make somebody find their own answers. So that's our approach to education in our school, Apogee Cedar Park and Apogee Strong, which is like a young men's mentorship program. All of it's cut from the same cloth, which is a learner driven environment. So the, the students are doing all the heavy lifting. They're making millions of decisions a day. They're not little lemmings. So it's an actual brick and mortar school. That's right. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. And in your North sister's Austin. kids are there? No, they're, they're, she's still in California too. Okay. God, I would wish. Oh my gosh. I want all, like, I want all of them to come to California, yeah. but they can't handle this heat right now. It's so hot. It's we we have friends that just moved here last week from Hawaii. And I'm like, you moved. You gotta check on them every day and make sure they're not dead. <laughs> you moved at the worst. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. 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 Let's come see you. you no, know, don't, don't, don't come out yeah. here right now. No. <laughs> Stay in the air conditioning for yeah. right now. I'll see you in yeah, the end of September. Progression. There's a progression yeah. out Maybe here, man. mid-October. But do you remember in, um, man, was that 2014? Mm -hmm. When it, we had the hottest record. Yeah, the drought. The, yeah. And then it rained. Yeah, the, the 500 it, year flood. Yep. And it flooded everything. everything. Mm -hmm. That was after a summer like this. Yeah. So I'm down for that. Well, we, we try not to joke about that and put that in the air because of how this this is how, how this is how it starts. Yeah. yeah. We had two summers like that because Harvey All was in 2017. Yep. So, and that was. Shit, man. We were getting hay from up hot. north for the cows. Yeah, because it was so bad. All the fish. Do you know what I mean, yeah, I, 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 all, those ponds are forty we lost feet. We two hundred trees here. Yeah, in yeah. two thousand and wells are going dry in, in Austin. Oh my gosh, yeah. I have a crazy well, but like not my neighbors are all fine. But it's like Spicewood, 
they're they're going dry. So you got a, a generator? Mm -hmm. you, okay, good. That's, man, that I was, need to up my game though. So if you got a generator, Jenny? yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> you got to pack up Jenny for the gym. I do. <laughs> I guess we're such grown ups now talking about generators. <laughs> no, listen, listen, this is important. This is important. To be self sustaining. I got right. solar, I got batteries, I got chickens, Look, I got I all got the chickens. things. There's a couple of things if we keep talking about it, y'all need to pay attention. Yeah. Now, even hey, if I got you. that's one of them, man. If I tell you to clean your freaking air conditioner, do it. If you got a generator, that's important too, man. <laughs> clean your air conditioner. <laughs> Hey, it's, it's about to get hot out there, there, man. No. This is going to be the some average life of a, of a dying air out there, is man. Eight years, and that is in normal temperatures. Under this, I bet. In oh, normal, yeah. Yeah. Less do we sound like our parents? Seats. What commercial is that? Because yes. I, I don't, I understand why. Because yes. my father we died, rest in peace, sir. But I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, we officially <laughs> sound It is freaking we're hot. We're old souls. <laughs> like we said, you, there's a lot, a lot of living in, yeah. in a little bit of life. I'm a very old soul, so I, I get it. You know how yeah. a lot of times we survived overseas, man? We had us tucked in those tents, whether we had plywood or it was just that straight cut. That freaking AC unit they put on us that would pump through them tents, it was like living in a freezer. Yeah. That, I, I, I didn't have a problem where we were at because of that. Yeah, it would. It would. Uh, it was one of the few things, especially when you'd step out and you would come back for but, three, four days. Like I would think, only, how much we, all the weight you would lose just by yep. going out of town? Oh. Fifteen oh, pounds. I would lose fifteen Fif pounds in three days. Yep. And then the only Y'all thing... suck. Men just suck on the fact that you can just... It can be hot this outside. This is a freaking uh, desert diet. It's, it's, yeah, this <laughs> is, it's easy, man. This is not the... Bro, know, it, it sucks you so bad. You have dysentery. No, you're sweating 10 crap, pounds a day. Dude, I mean, you can't even you're imagine, not eating dude. for three. So, like, that is not a fair... Yes. Okay, fine. It's so hot, you don't want to eat. You got that damn water, which it turns into 150 degrees on your back, because that's where you're carrying it. Most of us is water. Yeah. That C-17 ramp, it's, it's water and ammo. Dude. That C-17 ramp would drop the first time you get in country and you get hit in the face with that air and you're like, that hair dryer. Okay. Is there a bell to ring? Dude. Like, where, where do I get back? Right. Back Some guys turn play. back around. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Never mind, man. I'll get out of here. <laughs> yeah. That ramp drops and there's you and the Air Force people gap, are just sitting dude. there like this. So back to the school thing. How mm. do you, are you planning on franchising that out? Like, So okay. I own a bunch of businesses and they're big businesses and I spend more time on this school. I have not figured it out yet. It's year with, we just finished our first year. We're starting our separate se second year this, this August and, um, 80% flipping staff where didn't have the right people, didn't have the right vision. Um, you know, got rid of a third of our families. Cause, uh, I, I, a great friend, Matt Bordeaux, who runs the largest Socratic school in the world, um, the, under the Acton model in California and, uh, Matt Bordeaux and I own that Apergy strong young mentorship program together. And so I talking with him, he's like, you're going to spend 90% of your time on 10% of those families. Why don't you just cut those 10% of those families and bring in more like-minded families that share that same vision. So we had to change our funnel about how we we're going to accept families. Um, you know, it really, cause it has to be, imagine that a full family approach for this process to work. Yeah. So if, if you're like the parent that's wants to drop your kid off at school and then have on the refrigerator, a little gold star of all the great grades that they had, you're not for the school. Yeah. That's not what it's for. Like you have to be just as an involved, involved, um, guide and parent and mentor to your child. Um, so have you guys been pulling a lot of people from the business space? Because it seems like what you're doing with the school is completely translated to the business Most of world. the parents are entrepreneurs. Okay. That, that's actually a per, very perceptive question. And it's something I wish I would have known when I was selecting parents was uh, like, if you're the the nine to fiver that wants to drop your, uh, drop your kid off at 8.30 on the way to work mm, and yeah, then come back in, that's not, not, that's, that's not my yeah. parent. Yeah, those are different. You know, yeah. That's, we're, there's, there's, there's something, uh, I start telling people, man, once we the, our billionaires started measuring their libidos off of their rocket ships, not their yachts, we shifted gears into a different dimension. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. All right. So uh, there are things out there and the way they're raising, they're, they don't have normal jobs. That, that no. doesn't exist anymore. Especially when we got back. As I, we, we came back in different time uh, tables. Like I, I punched out a certain year. We, a lot of times with the military before us, the boys before us, they all came back at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We trickled out. Yeah, it's been trickling in. And some so guys were contracting. Up with itself. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I couldn't figure because those of us, it was crazy. I'm so, in, I'm like, mesmerized by the school thing because our kids have been at the same school since i mean they were in gotta come see it i would love to see it it's, it's magic it is magic it's indescribable to watch an eight-year-old take control of their own education think about that 
You're like, you're like that's impossible. Yeah. An eight-year-old doesn't have the capacity to make the decisions about what they should be doing. But they do because they very quickly learn the consequence of not doing the right things. But when, when they're given the options of choosing, am I going to do my work right now or am I going to do my work later? But then they watch all their friends go outside to play and they're yeah. like, but your work's not done. Right. Like, well, but I want to go play. I'm like, well, you chose to do this other thing and and the byproduct, I'm not punishing you, yeah. but the byproduct is you still have to get your work done. My dad did that to me when I was a kid. But this is how it works yeah. and you learn to how to make the right decision. But yeah. they're making all of the decisions, when to eat, what pencil to use, what, um, like everything. That's and it, so interesting. So are you, you're obviously charging tuition for these kids and you're you said already that you're like selecting what mm -hmm. the best fit for the family yep. is. Is the tuition really high? It's not. No, I, you know the way you're saying that. I, I, I making like their own they're making their franchise. own decisions. I, an eight year old, something that could freak somebody out. It does freak them out. But the, there's they another way. The out. way I hear that, hear that is like it's it's not just that though. It's learn. They're in in a situation to where they learn the decision that they yep. they need to make. Mm -hmm. But the learning curve is is it's not as constructed. So you, in regular education, you have these very clear benchmarks. You have, you know, weekly tests and you have, yeah, sure. you know, your scorecard. Um, we, we might have someone that is going to really start fluently reading and in the reading comprehension that like they may not be interested in it until they're in fourth or fifth grade. Oh, yeah. And a parent is going to be freaking out. Mm -hmm. Like, why isn't why isn't Tommy just reading like all of his friends? Well, it doesn't interest him yet. You know, until he finds something that 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 lure of him wanting to do it, us forcing him to do it is going to have a bigger yeah negative. I mean, that's so complicated to think of that on a grander scale. You can see how that would be difficult for yeah. a parent. Exactly, yeah. and to, to to make it that big to where you could keep up with each kid. Because I I I'm the only time I notice that is when age and rank. That's yeah. the same thing. Age and rank for us, and that's the, you say that well. Cause there's some things that when I was a kid, man, no matter how much I studied that sucker, it wouldn't stick. It wouldn't. Would not, not only no. would it not stick, it'd go the opposite damn direction. Yeah. Like I would get dumber for trying to learn it. I, I had my multiplication tables front and back when I was in first grade. I mean, I could do every mm -hmm. single one of them so quick. I could not divide. <laughs> it's amazing. And then there's some stuff now that I'm at this age, I pick it up so fast, it's not even funny. Yeah. Like I go back when I'm teaching the kids something or I'll go just to, haphazardly especially if a buddy knows it like yeah. if he's good at it and he, he shows me his trick yeah his little hey, hey check well and marcus is just learning things that like i thought everyone knew like when we were little and he's just learning that makes like, me sound like a dumbass yeah, wait, no. wait a second wait a second no, 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 no. Well, we definitely had different no, routes like here. different tricks <laughs> yeah. you know of multiplication or different things or whatever and marcus is like oh my gosh did you know this I'm like yeah i thought that's what I comes from good teachers you know, that, that. that way that stoic i i'm kind of figuring out how I teach. Like I'm a Mr. Miyagi type stoic. I, I read the meditations of Marcus Reyes all the time. Best book on the planet. Yeah. If there, you're a young man listening to this and you haven't read that, you haven't read meditations of Marcus Aurelius, go fix yourself right now. Yeah. It's a, I'm going to share it, man. That's one I, I throw them through every every day. Sung Su, Art of War. There's a few of them out there that, that are set for life. Yeah. And, and then just over, you can tell when somebody, and that's the best part of when you see the, that December and the old guy's hair, like there's a difference between silver and gray and white. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And when they when they drop something on you, it's 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 just like yeah, it's a logic thing, yeah. right? It's, that's, it's basically what it is, a logic thing. It's like a, a programming thing. Like yeah, it's, that's, I mean, that's Mar Marcus Aurelius is a direct, direct lineage of the Socratic method method of learning. I mean, so like big he, fan. Yeah, as a Stoic, he truly understood it. Well, and I didn't mean that negatively because I'm you, joking. I'm just kidding. You yeah. knew that. <laughs> I just needed I'm, to clarify I'm, for I'm myself kidding. as no, a wife funny. because no, no, it's funny. <laughs> you. <laughs> so my wife would just be like. Now he's dumb. Yeah, no. that's yeah, what no, my no. wife would have done. No, so you, you guys, no, no, no. You know, I, I do want to clarify myself because you sure that, you that. just learned it by just memorizing it. I had to have the tricks to learn it. Like I had to know all tricks the are the best things. way to do it. Yeah, though. that's yeah, how we, I learned we went it. the dumb way. You knew it there's just those, off. Well, of there's those guys memorization. There's those guys who can <laughs> see it and just like I mean I understand how that pattern works. Yeah, it's amazing. Like when we're all together. Like you plug us in, those the guys from every walk of life, and when they there's certain situations that we get put into when they step in there and you just watch them do their thing, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, so amazing so that you know you don't have that skill. Yeah. And when yeah. you see something like that, like where you don't possess that possess that that exact, yeah. you can feel it. <laughs> well, 
there, right? Uh, it's it's awesome to see that. I don't know how to describe what it's like on a team. Like you, you just you did it in a couple of senses right there, where it where it's it's literally magic. Like every single one of my flaws is made up by somebody else's strengths. Nah, dude. Like every single one of the things that I don't understand or know, somebody else knows front and back and has memorized it. And and but when you put that thing into this collective group that is an unstoppable fighting force that can literally do anything from overthrowing a country to writing a new constitution. And um, I try to explain this to people and it's, it's I, I, in words it makes sense, but until somebody sees it and experiences it and it has to happen in the most dire austere environments, you then know, it's oh. just like. Well, yeah. if we can do it there, we can do it anywhere else. Yeah. Let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Stride Career Prep. Did you know that only 45% of high school students feel that they are prepared for college or careers? I know that that's probably true because I know how I felt whenever I was graduating school. I remember just the feeling of what is next. Today's sponsor, Stride Career Prep, is helping change that. Stride Career Prep lets students take charge of their education and their future by combining real world skills training and traditional academics. Students can earn college credit while in high school or get the training needed to land a job right after graduation. Stride Career Prep prepares your team for in-demand careers in business, tech, health science, criminal justice, and more. And students can take courses developed by industry professionals, prepare for certifications, get hands-on experience, network, and most importantly, gain the confidence to succeed. Stride Career Prep is backed by over 20 years of experience in online learning. Make sure you guys check them out. If you know of a student that could use a little extra support, make sure that they are set up for success, have the confidence they need to be successful. Then take charge today at k12.com slash podcast. That is k12.com slash podcast. But nobody yeah, else can do it They literally threw us back in time to where not only do we look different, <laughs> I mean, we do, and we stood out in every, every capacity. They even dress us differently, put us back in there, and our guys took care of us. If you ever get to the point of franchising out your school, I want to know. So I got I to gotta get this perfect. I get yeah. asked probably 100 times a week, when, when can we do this? And, um, and I, I don't want to scale. So we have a new program director, Michelle Myers, and this woman is brilliant and she's passionate. Her kids go to the school and she is, um, and she's, she's coming from an Acton. So another Socratic approach, mm -hmm. which was founded by Jeff Sandifer and Laura Sandifer in Austin. I, oh my gosh. Great, yes, Jeff well, is a great friend of my he, dad. He's a great person. Yeah, good dude. You spoke at his I, thing. I know exactly who his name is. Oh that my dumb. gosh. Again, I, you know, no, I mean, so, so, <laughs> Socratic as well. Oh my so, gosh. Yep. That is so funny. So I Mich it Michelle out. is now our program director. And oh, wow. uh, so we're, we're revamping. Jeff and, is a great human being. Yes. Him and my dad do business together. Those in the camps he puts industry. on, yeah. the, the, the way he teaches. Yeah. So yeah, you guys got PE craziest... teachers and everything? Like you guys need, you put the word out to the guys. It's like, hey, bring in some of these teachers, man. So uh, as as I was envious of your land, we're also looking for, because like, I, I don't think it's the right school until there's goats and chickens and and the kids are coming in scuffed up and dirty. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. So, that's what so school important. is supposed to be. Yeah. And it's not what school is now. Yeah. And also, ought to say, or, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about that, but I'm into the men mentoring kid phase of my life. Like mm -hmm. transition came yeah. with the kids, right? Yeah. And everything that we've learned, especially going over and seeing the kid, that was the hardest thing, right? When we're over there, because we integrate with the family, y'all yeah. especially. Yeah. And coming back and, and passing that down yeah. up into the point where we're like, hey, you know, we always got these kids doing something. There's always a routine. Like, well, well, if we don't have a bunch yeah. of men like you stepping up to mentor this next generation, we are absolutely. Well, that's my point is I was talking about that. She <laughs> yeah. said, she was talking about your. You're, you're what you do. Yeah. I was like, well, that's kind of what I, I want to do. I don't want to reinvent any wheel, but if there's one already going with the yeah, boys, I'll jump on that sucker, man. Yeah, we don't need to reinvent any wheel, but if you ever have, if you ever get to a point where you want to branch out to different areas or whatever, we would be very interested. So, well, maybe come over, check it out, yeah. sit down with Michelle and I, and then, I mean, may, maybe it's not even branching out or franchising. Maybe it's just copy, rinse, and repeat. Yeah. Because yeah, I, so I don't want to own this. Like I don't well, you own should. Socratic you education. Make no, money on no, money. no, the, the no, enforced multiplication and buy with and through. Like advise well, assist yeah. a company. At some point, you have to let go of the reins yeah. and and for this so for us to save this well, generation, like I take thought it. Acton sounded familiar. So does Jeff own that? Jeff owns Acton, and Acton is a Socratic. There's about ten Socratic lines. And uh, year one, we were in Acton. Year two, we are not. Okay. We're a Socratic private school in Texas, Apogee okay. Cedar Park. And, um, but I mean, there, there's a bunch of great ones and I think he's fantastic. He is. He did this thing where I think I can talk about this. 
Andrew might have you take this out. Roger I'll that. double check before we you we release this. But um he did this camp for um MBA students at his ranch in Austin. And it was like the Hunger Games. So he he basically based it off kill of the everybody. Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> he, I'm so into this. Yeah, so like, he keep had going. Them all come out, and I don't know the whole thing, but he had Marcus come out to um he gathered them all together, and Marcus like spoke to him, and then they were gonna have to leave. It's like the most dangerous game. I hunted them after. Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were. They you don't have like a summer program where I can come in and yeah. coach for a second. They were gonna leave when Marcus was done, and they were being blindfolded and dropped off in all these different, very remote parts of this ranch. They didn't have a phone or any electronics oh, or no. anything like that. They. The same thing happens to us. When yeah. we're I'm like, oh no. They it's a Tuesday. had to, and they had like very minimal. Um, things on them, like maybe a little tent and whatever. I don't remember what it was, but um, they had to be prepared to stay out there for like four days by themselves yeah. and make it back to the campsite. And they were far, like this yeah. is a big ranch. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, he's making these students do this. Yeah. And he had like video cameras set up so he could see what they were doing during this whole time. Um, but they all ended up, I think making it back somehow. Um, but it was just this crazy yeah. ass thing. And I was like, what is that? We have do this to with do every with private it? that comes into the military. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, every you know pilot. what I'm talking about? Like yeah. when they dropped us off like yeah. in Afghanistan on the mountains, we're like, we'll be back. Yeah. Well, no. Sweet I hope mean, so. Good, good luck. Yeah. Please. For someone that did man. not grow here, up man. in a military Craven family, like I was like, what is he doing with these MBA students? And it was basic like survival skills, life skills that he was trying to teach them. And yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He does a lot of whack stuff yeah. that work out. It, he's, I mean, he's, it he's a fascinating guy. Yeah. His, Laura's book's good too. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to like study your whole system because like the framework to me is like extremely fascinating because yeah. coming from like the business side of things, it's like when I was a kid, I don't feel like I had the power to make a lot of choices and decisions for myself. It was kind of like you were yeah. just going through that systematical approach to education and being able to kind of be put between two lanes and saying like, hey, what we're seeing right now is these 18 year olds that are graduating from high school and they've had nearly every decision made for them. Yeah. And then they arrive in college and now they have been force fed everything up to this point and now they're being fed something different, which is much more dangerous, which is ideas. Yeah. And uh, but they're given the freedom to make their own decisions with these very dangerous ideas. And it's the it's it is a petri dish for disaster and the virus that that has been socialism and that has been entitlement. And uh, and and we're at this like influx, this period of our of this nation's history where if we don't fix what happens right here, so we're we're the opposite approach. I want ki little kids to make all of the decisions yeah. and they're used to making decisions and they're used to having the consequence of bad decisions. So when they get there and somebody says something stupid, they're like, that doesn't work. Well, I've actually, I, I launched my own company when I was 12. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 12. And, and what you're saying, a, Mr. Economist, teacher, professor, <laughs> does not make any sense. Yeah. So uh, suck it. Yeah. Suck that's it. A, yeah, that's the. That's how you were, Andrew. I mean, you oh, yeah. beat all the odds. Andrew grew up in a very like, I mean, I'm not trying to be no, rude, you're good. but you were like in an impoverished area. For sure. And um, I mean, I saw it. I, I knew him as a kid. And um, he like fought hard to get out of that area and to become something and make something of himself. And he... He really, I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Um, because I don't know you, but <laughs> yeah, nice to be proud of you. Nice to be I am super I'm not proud, proud of you too. Because he, and he did it himself. He didn't just write on coattails of other people that he knew. He actually did put in all the work. And um, yeah, I mean, you did it. You got yeah. out of your situation and now you're helping your family. So I think that's super cool. Well, I mean, you got a bunch of people around. Especially with the story is the best part because everything that you argue about in business, that's mm -hmm. just kind of noise. It's like there is an end game. Yeah. And we, up down to a phrase. Like, say this. Yeah. If they say that, say this. And if you say that, it'll turn them off. I mean, and it, that, it's a chess game. Mm -hmm. It's a verbal chess game. Yeah. No matter where you go. And I mean, it, the more you, the better you play, the, I mean, the more you play, the better you get. And kind of that's a life in itself. But if you got them young kids, because they don't know anything else, don't have any bad habits. Yeah. If you're just feeding them straight, 
motivation. Yeah. This is the good stuff. I mean, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I mean, I don't know why they don't practice that. Just addition, subtraction, multiply, divide. Boom. Yeah. Well, very rather. Have you ever been somewhere where you had to crunch some gimbal numbers or do some crazy shit like that? And we were under pressure. I, I haven't had to work on that. I, <laughs> like, you know what I'm no. talking about? My gosh, like our kids' math that they bring home, I don't understand it. And I'm like, I don't know a time that you will ever use this in your yeah, entire I mean, life. JTAC, like the call for fire stuff, uh, mortars, artillery, um, sniper stuff. Like, I think it's that's specialized. All, that's all basic math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's also specialized too. I think like some of the kids you can teach one kid to do something may never use it again. I mean, they are smart enough to and retain. If you watch them, they'll let you know which direction they need to go. Yeah. It's kind of like trying to fit. I was like, all these frames on the outside, man, you're born into that. But you can put a freaking like a power boat on a NASCAR track. It's it's transportation, yeah. man, but some of that thing is supposed to it doesn't belong there. Yeah. No matter what you put in it and how you try to drive it on there. Yeah. What we do is we we actually watch each other. I try to explain it. But I was like, man, there's a huge difference between looking, seeing, and watching something. It's like water, ice, and air. That's all. That's the same thing, but three different things yeah. completely. So like with us, I saw we, we train till we yeah we're we're not bad at it. We get good, then we get real good at it, then we just don't get bad at it at all. Yeah, then, then we you, train till we look you good do it until doing you it. Can't do it wrong. That's right. And then till we look good at it. Yeah. Team guys do it <laughs> yeah. that way, right? The green berries yeah. and seals we go till we look cool doing it. Most that people like have rule number one. Hey, that's rule number one. Yeah, it, it, it sounds so <laughs> narcissistic to say it, like always look cool. But when when you actually if apply you it, think about that though. It's you can't look cool if you're missing a target, bro. You can't look cool if I'm dropping a mortar and uh, it's not hitting where I'm trying to. And that's send why it. we say that. Well, so that actually leads into a really good segue to another. But we conversation. wear good sunglasses. It does. <laughs> and the sideburns, bro. <laughs> we got a freaking cut out. Our yeah. oldest son is 24, and nice. he, a lot of his friends, they graduated college last year, last two years, and um, a lot of his friends, and I think it's from hanging out, they all would come here from college and hang out. They were around Marcus and his friends. A lot of them are wanting to go into the military, and they're trying to decide mm -hmm. which way to go. Should I go into the SEAL team? Should I go into whatever? So what would you say is the main difference between, other than water, the main difference between Green Berets and Navy SEALs? A, a mission first. I think if you reverse engineer what the, what the purpose of is e of each of them, and they are very different. So the Green Beret model is a force multiplier. Um, by, with, and through, we are designed to go in and train a foreign group to fight, like find an ally mm -hmm. that that aligns with us and against an enemy and train them in a, in a, in a force capacity way. So uh, a perfect example would be Ukraine right now, yeah. sending an American special forces ODA to the Azov and training them on how to use javelins and AT4s and laws. Yeah. Oh, it's know. deeper than that. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just using a very, yeah. very it teaches right. you how to take the country back. Yeah. Think about that. So I didn't know this. I did not grow up in a military family at all. Um, it, I'm still learning a lot of things, but um, I didn't know until um, that horrible thing in Afghanistan when they just left that day yeah, and there. it just crashed. It was whatever. I mean, that was just the most awful thing to watch. But um, I didn't know that Rangers, I think you told me this, were the ones that were actually trained to take airports down. That's right. And I like I had no idea, and I think a lot of civilians that don't have military in their family, they don't know that each branch is designed to do something different, like what you're saying, the force multipliers and SEALs having theirs. So what I would like for y'all to do with the different special operations, what are the different things that y'all are trained to do? Like who is supposed to do what? So you, you, everybody needs to be able to shoot, move, communicate, medicate. Right. You know, and when I say shoot, I mean from sniper systems to calling in air fire to calling naval gunships to you know like shoot. Period. Mm -hmm. um, move and communicate. The you know if you go to like infantry manual manual seven eight, you're not going to see a difference from a SEAL team to a Green Beret unit uh, respond, react to contact, or conduct an ambush a different way. There's a book on it, and and you have to do it at the highest level, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then on the medicate 
the exact same. Everybody learns the same medicine about, you know, like everybody's going to 18 Delta courses, the special yeah. missions units, like the JMAO. Marcus did that. Yeah, they're, they, there's one way to do medicine. There's yeah. one way to keep blood in the body. Yeah. And uh, I think that's good for our listeners to hear because a lot of times <laughs> we get, nays- everybody gets naysayers on social media or whatever. Like Marcus was 18 Delta and they're like, but that's army. You can't do army. It's the people that, are, yeah. that don't know anything. I've, I've been literally and, to every single sniper school with all the different branches of service. Right. And it, uh, and like yeah. garnered good things out of each of and them. We hide that stuff from y'all. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. uh, there's yeah. so much stuff that goes into every layer of being in the military that it's impossible to keep up with all of it. Yeah. Like, when, just asking that question is. We could spend months. Months explaining. talking about right. that. Because then, then you, you can take breaks. the fundamentals out and then you go to the mission purpose end state of each of the respective special operations unit. Yeah. Then you can start reversing engineering what their specialties are going to be. Yeah. You know, so how do people learn that? Like in kids the that are wanting, so, yeah, just like going, going, going in, in there. Yeah. It's almost yeah. it's as complicated as a family dynamic and and a football team. So yeah. you got a quarterback, you got O line and D line, and then in a family you're just looking at them. They all look the same. Yeah, but they're different. Yeah, and, but when you when you're fighting all of them, man, then then they start breaking off, and each one of them has a skill set you can't believe. And then there's the the common language we speak: move, shoot, communicate, medicine. Every one of us can throw out verbiage that all of us understand through all the ranks. It's like it's a different family, cousins, brothers. How did I, okay? This is how yeah. I, this well, how I, mean, I broke I it down. I get that. I'm just saying a lot of our listeners that I've had to learn through the last twelve and years so that the, a lot of our listeners that are just civilians that appreciate y'all's work. Well, once you get in it, you you know you you can kind of go what you're passionate about. You yeah. know? So even get, going onto the teams. Um, I went like this direct action. So I was going to, you know, schools to kick in doors and demo doors and, you know, like very direct action. Assault. Yeah. Assaulting a target. That's what that means. Like mission specific to that. And then I was like, okay, I kind of wanted to get in this recce lane. So then I went to sniper schools Then I went to Halo sniper team. And I was like, okay, well now there's another deviation. Do I go the tech surveillance route? I kept splitting. Yeah. Us. Kept, yeah, kept splitting. And you have guys that truly you 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 can you can't be a master of all of this stuff. Right. <laughs> we got some dudes to try. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stay in forever, man. And yeah. have, they got more calls than when they walk in. They got a that BDU resume. I mean, they got every merit badge. Yeah. Looks like a Boy Scout, Eagle Scouts in the military. I wrote up the Green Berets and, and Seals. They're like step brothers. The Rangers are the younger brother. The Marines are older brother. <laughs> <laughs> and the Air Force is a younger sister. <laughs> How about right? Yeah, but she's rich. She's rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's probably a different dad. Yeah. Like that. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She's got a badass house. Right, right. So like, she's got a badass house. I love oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, when you come in, it's it's like different. Your skin's different color. That's how you got like, The Marines have the best uniforms. Yeah. Hands down, so when they good. walk in, it's like a thing. You don't, you'll never see one out of shape nope. in their uniform. And once they're one, they're always one. SF dudes are like the bastard kids that God keeps outside. Yeah. Like do, the, in the family, got them rough and tumble some guns you just don't mess with, but they gotta have them around forever. The, the, Sometimes you just rattle the cage and throw them yeah. a, a nasty Whatever. bone off just, the table. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Dude. We don't care. No. Just yeah. if you want to show us some attention, cool. If you know, we do. Because there's every walk of life in that sucker. I mean, from the rich kids to the kids who come from nothing, yeah. and they buddy up. Yeah. That that is that is one of the coolest things. Coolest about the things. You will have the trust fund billionaire that billionaire. speaks three languages and he's on the team and he's a staff sergeant freaking lowest rate yeah <laughs> yep. and, yeah and then you're gonna have like the then you're gonna have the kid coming from the poorest i mean he he learned to swim so he could pass that, the swim test and that's where he learned to swim yeah and uh he's gonna give it everything he had just to be there <laughs> yep and so you gotta it's it's every direction it's like these rich kids they gotta try the hardest they can to get away from that yeah and then the poor kids the same thing I and mean, we're like all searching from this one deal and and when you sit there, when we have to go through the things that they selection that they put us through, it, it gets rid of all that crap. Yeah. And they you can talk about the strangest couples. Okay. Well, that question was for Glenn, Sergio, and Noah. Yeah. <laughs> so, My favorite thing you. about it is what you just said. Everything else goes away. <laughs> we had a gay guy on our team, and we're in Col- Colombia, and uh, he's like, "We're all going out." And he's like, "Hey guys, um, I'm gay." And we're like, "Oh, are you?" Yeah. Surprise. Like, we're, we're in Medellin, Colombia. Like, you haven't been looking at the girls around us. Thanks, bro. Like, nobody cares. You know, we, Literally, uh, nobody cares. You're black. Nobody cares. Yeah. Like, can you do your job? Can you not do your job? That's it. You know, we're trained to see everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we, we don't live together yeah. through the most austere conditions. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't come into our... That nobody cares. comes in when, come, when people, we're dealing with people on the outside. Yeah. 
when it's just us, that doesn't even come into play. It's nobody fine. cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Okay. So talking about being a force multiplier, can you tell us about what you're doing in the Ukraine and like what you did with the Afghanistan takedown? Oh man. Yeah. Or at least about the can organization we, that you do it with. Can we maybe? go with Afghanistan first and work? Because yeah. when we're knocking on the door of the one year anniversary, that's next yeah. month. Yep. Almost exactly one month from today. We're 11 months out from when the, today's the 25th. Yep. yep. Yeah. So uh, we're three days away from 11 months after the bombing at the Abbey Gate. Um, so Chad Robichaud, who doesn't live too far yeah, from here. Yes. No, exactly. Good yeah. man. Yeah, good man. Um, my phone rang. He called me and says he had an ter- interpreter named Aziz that was trapped and they're currently hunting him. Okay, and- so should we give some props to the Turks right now? Yeah. I feel like we should. Yeah. So Those guys are great. They're the best. Mm-hmm. And and and, and I, it, it angers me because people they used to be here yeah no questions asked but everybody asked the question like wait wait aren't these afghans like aren't these terrorists is like listen bro Good. yeah they they <laughs> jumped on bombs for us my vehicle oh you can't ban what they'll do anything they'll do anything the vehicle that ended up on my hood in the in that in that book when i was in this valley of death that they were the number one vehicle because they knew that they might run over the bomb first yeah and they chose to be there. We to, didn't tell them to be there. To be an American. That's right. They said they wanted to be there to and prove to us that they wanted to fight with how us. How do you prove that you, you want to be an American more than more that? More than that. So phone rings. <clears throat> my, my buddy's on the run. Taliban's trying to kill him. Can you come to Afghanistan? I think I got us a way in. And my phone had been ringing off the hook, mostly from contractors. Um throwing me money to go get people. You're like, hey, I'll pay you 10, 10K a day, go get this guy. And that was so wrong in my heart to the reason to go back to Afghanistan again t- for, for money. Yeah. And then my friend, who when I was having a hard time in, with my marriage, he was the person I called and he picked up and he gave me wise, sound, moral advice that saved my marriage. He's now asking me for something. Mm-hmm. So uh, the same time that my phone is ringing, Nick is talking to Sarah Verardo who comes from the Independence Fund. It was a huge organization that does great for veterans. Um, her husband was h- horrifically wounded in Afghanistan, and she is a power leveraging, like she knows everybody, um, and very powerful people in all of the ways that we needed and all the contacts that we needed to get into the country legally and cross every T and dot every I without breaking a whole bunch of laws. With those two people, the purpose, the reason and the end state and then the right governance, like the right government approvals. That's how we, the mission of Save Our Allies started was right there. The four of us on the phone at the same time, me talking to Chad, Nick talking to Sarah and the four of us are the founders of Save Our Allies. That's awesome. So we flew into Afghanistan and uh, in the 10 days. Okay, wait, when you say you just flew into Afghanistan, yeah, it's gangster you can like just that. No, <laughs> united yeah, right. like fly happening? into Afghanistan. No, this is the thing. Like, if if I said <laughs> figure out a way to get Afghanistan, you got to be there in twelve hours. Do you think that he'd be in Afghanistan? I mean, I, I think de- he could yeah, get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know he would. Yeah. So, okay, so you just made it happen. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you tell that's yeah. She, that's the first time she heard that. Yeah. <laughs> we we went to a lily pad country. We hopped on. Um, we had bought an Afghan airline and we flew into the UAE and then we took that Afghan 737 into Kabul, Afghanistan from the UAE. And it was literally Nick and I on that plane. When I landed, we had um, three other guys on the ground. Nick stayed um, on the runway helping load that plane with evacuees. And uh, I went immediately to work with what would be then the four of us on the ground for the 10 days that we were in Afghanistan. Oh my gosh. And in those 10 days, we moved 12,000 people Mm. off of our own ramp with our own planes. Over 10% of everybody that left the country in those 10, uh, during the fall of Afghanistan, left on our ramp. The government, like the military, if you walked into their talk, it had our ramp. Oh my gosh. It was wild. That's crazy. So um, we're moving Terps, we're moving Commandos, we're moving SIV, Green Card, and American citizens. God, man, how was that gate? The, they were jammed up there bad? Man. It was desperation. Yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. It was desperation? Beyond anything I've ever seen, I'm ever, rep- ever, ever, anywhere. Women taking babies and trying to throw them over walls yeah, and landing yeah, in barbed wire. Yeah, mm. that's what I'm talking about. You know, um, Gosh. 
can't I'll, believe what they'll do, man. When they'll do anything, they, we've never seen that here. They don't know what that breakdown looks like. They don't even know what that feels like. You, yeah. That's yeah. the difference, man. Like when we're having to sit in there, and that starts that that, that part, like that desperation, lot and loss of hope kind yeah. of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I try and tell people this when I'm on out and talking, I'm like, look, Americans, bro, you, you don't you know. Could, you yeah. saw it too dimensional on a TV screen. You thought it was bad watching a guy hold on to some wheel well. Can you believe that? Vandegrin. Oh my God, that was so terrible to watch. Was that That's terrible? probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With so all cool. the garbage you can peel off of that and stuff we've seen, when that went down in front of me, I, could, I couldn't, I'd could turn around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was really bad. Dude, I couldn't yeah. believe that. They beach ball babies to the gate. Mm-hmm. Literally like at a, at a football game, you know, like a beach ball just starts floating around. They're beach balling babies to the front, just at the hopes of some Marine would reach down and grab yeah, that grab baby. Mm-hmm. And then when too many people would get there, the Taliban, they just walk up and Start dump an down. AK. No, just go yeah. to the back of the crown to push them away from the wall to try to prevent them from getting over. Why haven't we heard more? I mean, I know our government right now isn't the best, but well, I mean. <laughs> what would make you think that? So any, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I'm like. I mean, I hope everybody votes right this November. Right. Um, because the just to prevent this from happening again, because it happened in Saigon. I mean, right? I know our, our oh, president dude, You is, don't even want to get into that, right, how right. the correlation between those two, because the people who were in charge when they came in in 75, they're still there. Yeah. My they question, are still though, freaking there, man. My question was not about our government. That's why I was like, I know they're not, whatever. It's the people. Why are the people still not talking about that? It was just a I think year it's just ago. ugly to talk about. It's like, like, it's like us? No, no like, like the, the American media. Pe- yeah. like the Ameri- it's just, it's the media's not for- talking about it because it demonizes the current administration and makes them look bad to, yeah, include, yeah, the, to include the government, yeah. like the, the military, all branches. Because oh, oh, this was mean. Department of State, Department of Defense, the White House. This was a systematic failure of all of the different, or yeah, like yeah. every branch, every way that you can mess up, we messed up. And it's almost like, Correct me if I'm wrong on this, please. But I, it's almost as if because we stopped the fighting, right? They, so they pulled us out, and a different one went in, and then something else came in after that. So the, it was it wasn't a collapse or a shutdown. There wasn't money. There weren't any moving parts that kept that together. So when it fell like that, it fell. Yeah. And when you're leaving somebody behind, I'm like, bro, who'd you leave? Yeah. I hope it wasn't one of our healers or or one of the soldiers or a freaking, you know, somebody is important. All important. They all got to do something. Who the hell did you leave? Yeah. We left lots. I, well, I know that, and, and that's no, when y'all come, when y'all spun up. I was, I was so happy. I got kids, man. They ruined my life, bro. I can't go play anymore. It's ridiculous. Can't can't believe it. <laughs> so proud of you for doing. That. Yeah, I don't let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I will promote the shit out of y'all in your organization. And all right, so go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to interrupt. It. Yeah, it's not it's not brain science. It's not rocket science or, or brain surgery to realize that you don't move your tactical elements before you get the people out that you want to get out and that you don't get up strategic and tactical positions until you're ready for a proper withdrawal. Like you mentioned Sun Tzu, the art of war, like that's fucking chapter one. Right. You're like literally, you know, um, don't, don't like in Dunkirk, back yourself to the ocean. Well, we did that. Thank God that with the, the British naval, civilian naval came and saved everybody. Like this was literally the dumbest thing that we could do at a tactical level. And... Um, do you think we, that was the president, or was it like it was a it was a combination military. of both? No, it's a, yeah, it's a, you know, like, um, General Milley was one of the few people that was fighting on our behalf to enable and empower us to go and continue to do and rescue. Um, I'm not going to define what we did too much because we were doing stuff. Yeah, sure, no, I did that. But like, yeah. twelve thousand people, we couldn't do that without a couple of people backing us right and he's he's yeah. gonna he's gonna get the short in the stick he's gonna get fired you know be- oh yeah sure tell my general yeah of it's course. just crazy yeah. to me when there's a that large of a systematical approach or s- systematical failure that we don't just make it right in the moment yeah like yeah we could have fixed this you yeah like, it's like people are calling it a neo a neo is what we do yeah a non-combatant evacuation operation that is a military operation that is conducted and i mean we got books on how to do oh. it and, and we can we, have that done so fast. We could do it like this, and there's not a single person. You mark, are you fucking, you listen to me. We could have gotten every single person out of that country. You can't if, believe it. If it was a neo, it was not. It was a Department of State run, absolute shit. Sandwich. Yeah, they took us out of it, and it has not yet. The media stopped talking about it. People stopped talking about it. Now there's no pressure for us to re- evaluate why it went wrong. There's no investigation going on. And yeah, uh, I guess that's what my question is: is that, I mean, yes, the media talking about everything, but there's it's just like it fell off the face of the earth and. Uh. I mean, you never hear about it. There's well, no... Let me, t- let me okay, tell you about something else in front of it. Something else falls in front yeah. of it. 
you got you got vaccine Vaccines, next, then you got pandemic, pro-choice, freaking, then yeah, you yeah. got you know like a new just, Supreme Court justice, then you got Chicago's Ukraine. trying to kill themselves off on a regular on Saturdays oh, and Sundays. Okay. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, like every Monday, you're just like, wow. Well, yeah, <laughs> death toll thirty three Chicago. I mean, they that advertise that now yeah. like it's some kind of damn sports game. You know, you know, it's it's, it's so unbelievable. Crazy to me. Yeah. I would so think much that that would on. take precedence with Congress or you know all of that. Vote better, people. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, okay. If you weren't here, I'd eat this couch right. I'm almost at that couch right there to get throw the <laughs> oh trash in. I've been picking at it, and I just got it off. <laughs> it's like a sander and yummy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so you did the um, save our allies helped with the Afghanistan. Yeah, Afghanistan, and the process of moving somebody out of a war zone is really the same process of moving things into a war zone. It's the same skills, it's the same people, it's the same um, technology, and it's kind of like the same, uh, it's really the same skill set. So what we did was we just reversed engineered the same people. What we did in Afghanistan, our current uh, ground force director of operations in Ukraine right now, C-Spray, um, that's his code name. His uh, he was on the ground in Afghanistan, and you know he um, he has already done the most heroic rescues, like uh, the Fox News correspondent Ben Hall yeah. that got blown up. Were you out there for that? That was Save Our Allies, bro. Wow. We literally like that is going to be a movie. He got yeah. busted up pretty bad, um, right? Yeah, that man is brave though. Yeah, he, I he, heard that. No, no pain meds for twenty hours. He is. Um, I think he's. I don't know if his wife. I mean, like bad, yeah. bad wounds. Yeah, yeah, and right. uh, he just was just, let's go. That's crazy, too, because talking about him on Fox anymore, like they should. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he got busted up bad. Yeah, he's going to be back, and that man is going to be a fierce force to be reckoned with. Oh, he's a new standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they cycle just like we do. Yeah. His every, and mental faculties are perfectly intact. Um, he is going to be. Oh, good for, oh, they are? Okay, great. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Because now he's a real badass. Yeah. Because he's got the, he's got the street cred. Yeah, street cred. He's got man, a foot you know? missing, you know, <laughs> most of his hands missing. Even we saw that dude like, hey, bro. Yeah. Man, you got Someone's going to already... run their mouth to him and be like, oh, so when I was on the front lines in Ukraine fighting the Russians uh, as, a, as, a, as a war reporter, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my oh, you're a tough gosh. guy? I got blown up by a Russian yeah. rocket. So you have so many irons in the fire. You're doing Save Our Allies. You're doing the apogee program Mm -hmm. what else do you do so i have a a a company called sheepdog response which is a uh our mission statement is to train and equip people to preserve and protect human life so we are teaching law enforcement military currently school teachers like lots of school teachers Mm -hmm. about how to keep blood in good guys and let blood out of bad guys Mm -hmm. so let blood out of bad guys is sometimes little holes Sometimes um, it's just keeping them on the outside and uh, situational awareness and, and you know, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So Sheepdog Response, we go 200 courses a year. A couple of SEALs work there, a bunch of Green Berets, a bunch of MARSOC kids. Our uh, director is uh, Matt Smith. You know, he's, he's coming from a special missions unit. And uh, so like you have the highest pedigree of guys that have been at war their whole entire adult lives that have been training young men about how to, how to go and do war. This is not a trickle down thing. I have like systematically figured out how to put them into society to so the next time somebody walks into a school, there's going to be somebody waiting in the parking lot and they're going to there's going to end. Yeah, it. that's great. That, we, that's a brilliant way of doing that too. We were joking about it. I was like, hey man, the guy who should be driving those damn school buses is some ex badasses. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Vote it down. Like yeah. you, the janitor should be that some bitch that just go will go to work because so we put all can... that that security on our money but not our kids. Yeah, and. It's harder to get into a Costco than it is to get into a school right yeah. now. Like it's okay, harder. For our kids' school, and we, our kids are at a very small private school, nothing fancy. It's not one of the big fancy ones in Houston or anything. To get in, you have to be buzzed in. They have a camera. You have to, they either know you or yeah. you have to show an ID at the camera to get in. And then once you are buzzed in, you're in like a kill box. Yeah, that's right. Just and like my building. There, I mean, there's <laughs> there's another set of doors, yep. and then there's a lady behind a a you know fiberglass or whatever yeah. it is. You ever heard of complacency kills? You ever heard this expression? It's something we live by. You don't change your batteries one night, and the next night you go out and the batteries go out, and your laser's not working. Your night vision goes. Whoa. It's yeah. the worst sound ever. So what happens is 
that's the right thing when it's done the right way and the process is executed as as the design. Yeah. But then a teacher's like, oh, I just got to run out to the car real fast to get something. So she puts a little rock in the door, yeah. you know, or yeah. she doesn't go, she does, she, she's, she's already frustrated with the bureaucracy that is education. So she's not going to any, any extra courses. Every one of my teachers has to go to our protect course. They got to learn how to shoot. They got to learn how to communicate. They have to learn how to medicate. Like they have to learn those mm -hmm. things. Every one of my teachers. And uh, like, that's not a requirement anywhere. Yeah. I don't understand. Like why, if our little school that's 100% parent funded, if they can do it, and it's not a lot of parents with a whole bunch of money, we just pitched in however yeah. much it was. Um, so everybody knows too, because I have snipers on the outside and there's actually <laughs> daggers that fall <laughs> in the kill box <laughs> down. Yeah, I have it all just right. opens. And yeah, my just brother's there. There's a bunch of team guys. What just for anybody who was wondering. What I'm were those just, uh, Vietnam sticks that they like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just thinking like, why aren't all schools, why don't they take that COVID money that's just sitting somewhere um, yeah. that never got in used? Pocket. Right. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they using that and just simply putting automatic locks on every door? Just as a, a like a phase point one. <laughs> I yeah. mean, not even like a full... That's not going to solve the problem, but why not just do it? Yeah. I mean, there's three things that have, have to happen immediately. One of them is the hardening of schools. All of them should have the exact same, you know, like my, my brother that works on a nuclear power plant, it's pretty hard to get on that place. You know, it's, I would uh, think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's real hard. Yeah. Like you can make a place hard to get onto. Yeah. It's, we, we know how to do it. Oh, yeah. Like we're we're pretty good. Like if you don't want to get on my fob, matter of fact, get on my they can make it real hard. Like some of the, you can't believe it. That's it's not. It's funny, but it's not because the the some of these people, man, they come up with some stuff for their security systems. I think it's too much. Yeah, like it's impossible. They got to, cameras that shoot out man. tasers. You know, they got drones that can shoot like yeah. OC balls. I'm like, yeah. that's cool. I want all that, but right. yeah, I'd love like, to have it. Yeah, you don't need it. You don't need it, but so yeah, one is absolutely hardening schools immediately. Two is training people like law enforcement what we saw at the Ovalde shooting was a breakdown of training with law enforcement and um i'm not sure hopefully you haven't watched the video but oh yeah, shit yeah terrible. we saw it man okay. i can't even not, i mean not, i don't even 90 percent of the killing happened before law enforcement even got there i know it looks really bad when law enforcement got there everybody's already dead you know you could have saved some lives from from prevention of bleeding out but um the so law enforcement being trained differently, it wouldn't have really changed the actual number of students that died at Evalde. I know that sounds horrible because we saw how depressing and horrible their response was, and that has to be fixed. But you actually have to have somebody on site. The reason that we have special missions units that are four deployed at embassies, at capital, at, at cap in capitals of countries, it's because you physically have to have people there to respond. Those people are going to be teachers, janitors, bus drivers, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that have to be trained. Yeah, They'd be like, so that kid just crashed a car in the front and then shot at a couple of people yeah. walking in the parking lot, but then he's going to be able to walk across the parking lot and then walk into the, yeah. like, yeah. good luck doing that in my church. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're facing Well, you got a bunch coast. of us running around. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of our guys just laying around being lazy. Yeah. And we can wake them up. Yeah, let's you wake them up. definitely wake let's their wake ass them up. up. You know what I'm talking about? Because yep. when they're, we trickle out, there's phases that the, the PTSD is pissed off, tired, looking for something to do. Yeah. A lot of them are just, we got to go through our drinking phase. You got to go through all that drug and, and freaking wild. Re refind a purpose. Find your purpose. <laughs> but I mean, you. And there's a purpose sitting right here. Yeah. I mean, if people are just depressed and can't you know figure out what their groove is, get well, Protecting go, kids, yeah. everybody can get on that. Everybody board. can get on that. I don't think you'd ever get out of a job. No. So right? yeah. with Sheepdog, no. like are schools from all around the country sending teachers Not enough. there? No. So most of the schools don't have funding to, yeah, to send anything. anybody to private training. Mm. And the government is definitely, oh, tech, fortunately we're in Texas, so some of the school boards have a little bit of discretionary funds to, to get teachers. A lot of the teachers are paying out of pocket. I have scholarship funds where I personally am paying for teachers to come to it. You got a donation place for that? Oh, yeah. All right, check. Yep. Is that Sheep? Like, can you plug that? Yeah. Um, so for, we have the Kind Foundation for Apogee, and that's like how all of our teachers go to extra training. Um, and, uh, but man, if you're going to send money, send to save our allies right now. Like I'll, I'll, I'll pay for teachers to, to go to my schools. So you know, do, like, you, do you, do they do it to where you can go in during the school day so the teachers don't have to take off? Oh yeah. And, we're, we're doing it all. Oh yeah. I figured. Yeah. That's cool. That's, yeah. that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I would be really curious. And I'm sure a lot of, 
even just private schools all over the country that don't have just they don't know where to go to get trained um if anyone's listening be, to this like just it's look so up, it's, it's, i know talk. it's really hard it, it's almost a bridge too far for me to ask an educator when they like go to the website and they see guys like you that are you know like jaws and they're big and they've been fighting their whole entire lives like do i really need to go and learn this you do yeah they you do. There, you have to protect your flock. Or at least ask for a certain percentage of someone from the school. Like, ask for a okay. raise of hands. Who's willing? Yeah, it has to be voluntary. Yeah, it has who's to be voluntary. Willing to go do this. Oh, yeah. And out of this whole school, there's got to be a hand. It only takes one. All right. It only yeah. takes one to be in a in a like. When that dude walked into Batman with his mask and he threw that gas in there and he started shooting everybody in Aurora. Um, yeah. Like, do you know how many times I've had an erection thinking about being in that movie theater on that day? Man. And that guy there was like, don't even. Dude, it'd be so rad. It'd be so rad. Because like, ah, maybe get And he's dead. That's yeah. the end of the story. He's just dead. He, yeah. he made it like one step in. One of those perfect towns you pulled into, the basketball coaches should have been professional players somewhere. They came back to their town, right? Yep. And then everybody comes back and you watch out for your, your place. The safest spot is that is is that schoolhouse. Matter of fact, that's where you get out of the house away from all the chaos if you got it's a bad like home life. The guy life. we interviewed the other day, Jay Dobbins, is now the football coach. And um, he was uh, the CIA. It was ATF, yeah. Uh, ATF that took, um, he infiltrated the Hells Angels. Oh, right. I know him. And now he's, right? yeah. now he's a football coach. Yeah. At the, at a, he read a book. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. They did a documentary on him. What was that, Gangland back yep. in the day we watched? Yeah. <laughs> but that's so cool. Like, that's what we should be doing. Or somehow giving back to our kids. The, the, kids the, the warrior class, I got it. You set down your sword. You don't have to pick up your sword, but you got to get off your ass. Oh, man. Train that sucker. We need him back. Freaking... We need him back. Yeah, you got it. Well, that's the thing. There's a break in between. I, I I I agree with you on that 100 percent, man. Trade the rifle in, get a freaking shovel or something else. Or now you know why sports were invented. <laughs> something to keep these fools yeah. occupied. Yeah. And every different type of sport. And I, I I get with the teachers like when we walk in, you forget this. I I tell our guys this all the time. I was like, get your ass out in the neighborhood and meet your neighbors. They're not gonna come to your house. Yeah. You're yeah. terrifying looking. <laughs> Yeah. I tell him that all the time. Yeah. I'm like, but you she had to tell to me this. Yeah. She's like, go meet the damn neighbor. I'm like, here, well, come over and talk to me, damn it. I'm like, don't like, like, come over here. They're laying his booby trap, right? I mean, you got to go out and take our, especially the Green Berets UFC fighters. Like, sure, we'll go over and hang out with Tim. That's yeah. like, fast. That's awesome. Idea, dude. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if he's home. I am so tied in my neighbors. Yeah. That's what I'm, you know, a lot of the guys don't they don't tell them that. Super tied in. <laughs> okay, good. Do not try to come into my neighborhood. That's the way to All of us have a plan. That's you bro, know, same like here. you're not gonna make it through the entrance street, and then we actually have phase lines yeah. where you're I mean, what's up? Intersecting <laughs> sectors. People are like, hey man, you got secret service like shit. No, I got redneck neighbors, man. Yeah. They'll catch you and keep you. Bro, they just look for you coming to ask, like, hey, is Marcus <laughs> live around here? Oh, no, 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 oh yeah, right back in the back. In yeah. the barn. <laughs> hey, I'm in the barn back here. Come get some. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> So funny. I love my neighbors. We had a trespasser one time when Marcus, actually, we've had a couple, and every single time he's not home. And um, the first time it ever happened, it was before we had a gate, and our driveway is long. Yeah. Um, and this guy, I was actually pulling out. I was going to go to dinner. Good Lord. I had, I had a friend with me, and we're on the driveway, and this guy in a Jeep comes up right next to me, and I see he has a rifle just leaning up against um the dashboard and i kind of i wave him off i'm like hey who are you here like what are you here for and he said oh, i'm gonna take care of these punk ass teenagers that are vandalizing my house and i said nobody from here is vandalizing your house and at the time our son was about 17 18 and he just got home from football practice like that kid would go to school go to football come home do his homework and crash like yeah. he's not off doing anything ever. He never wandered around anywhere off the property. And um, he goes, no, I know they're back here. They uh, they let their German shepherd kill my dog. And I go, we don't have a German shepherd. I don't know what you're talking about. Good Lord. It's dangerous. Yeah, like you need to leave. Oh, it gets better. And I text Marcus's mom. She sent, which she called my mother in, bro. Is oh, our no. phase one. That's our first line of defense. She has the first house on the property. And I text her. I said, man with gun, come now. And I put at the creek. She comes out and she goes, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? And he goes, I'm going to take care of whatever. He starts, they're yelling back and forth. And she goes, 
she gets her shotgun and he goes, well, I got a gun too. She goes, and this is going to turn into some Hatfield and McCoy's kind of shit real quick. You better get the fuck off my property. <laughs> and don't you ever talk to my daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law like this again. Yeah. How many shit could she have? <laughs> Just, just, just me and my brother. Man, but my she father made more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'll kill you quick. She'll mess around, dude. She's she, doing... And she grabbed him by the back of his neck and she goes, You get the fuck off now. And <laughs> That's what I grew up with. <laughs> and if you look at her, you would think the sweet old lady. Yeah. <laughs> like you would she, never see That Gates Key now, though, huh? She's freaking oh. It yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Hilarious. Too, right? So yeah. while that. she's doing that, I'm taking a picture of the license plate mm-hmm. and I call up. We're friends with um, the local law enforcement. And I called them and I said, we had a trespasser. He had a gun. He was threatening, blah, blah, blah. And they went over to his house. They looked it up or whatever. And they said, he is a schizophrenic. Uh, and he has issues like going to different he's people's good. houses so is my or husband. whatever. Wait till they meet. Wait till they meet that dude. Yeah. And really they, um, next week we had a gate up or whatever. But they actually gave him a warning, a trespassing warning. And they told him, you went there with a gun they could have killed you like no questions yeah. asked they could have shot you yeah. and you would have never been found so yeah, I about Ca- him, castle put, doctrine's the thing yeah, yeah. put him on the gate just in. let everybody else know yeah, yeah. And, and the the gate is is recognized for trespassing you actually don't need a sign right it's so like mine i got i got the purple um fence paint. Posts. yeah, 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 yeah. I got the purple the trees on uh fence posts on trees i yeah. got the gate i got the sign you know, like you, you come on here, you, you know, have plenty you're of chances. Yeah. 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 You gotta, you gotta come three acres just to get to the front door. And when you get to that front door, like you're going to be in a gunfight. Right. You so know, you and then you gotta get through my Belgian. There's a couple Ooh. of, uh, cause I'm at my wall. Companies make really face. cool signs like area 53. <laughs> <laughs> you have any of those? No. Oh, you got to post it. Oh, on the his mom at her house, right when you pull up, there's a sign that says, All trespassers will be shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got all kinds of stuff out here when you come creep in. Because I know the kids try to you gotta sneak in here, yeah. but you got to make it interesting. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now yeah, I carry at least a, a challenge. gun in my car. Yeah, it won't kill you, but you will be maimed if you come in here. <laughs> yeah. And now I, I always have a gun in my car, so I don't have to call grandma. She's time. a great shot, too. Uh, by the way, she's better than. <laughs> this, is, this is terrifying. Actually, yeah. We have a. That sheepdog, we we have women's only courses that that are um, like designed for like just that, and uh, because you never know, like at a Walmart parking lot, you know, in Leander, this guy was a purse snatcher that was just going to fancy WalMarts or um, HEBs. Explain that fancy Walmart. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, not Walmart. (laughs) HEBs. Oh, Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, But like the the problem set that would be like what a Walmart parking lot is to an HEB to a Whole Foods, like those are three different problems. Yeah. And like just not knowing what my different problems are going to be. Like there are different predators that are going to be each of them. One's obviously looking for property crimes. One's probably looking for violence and he's already drunk. You know, it's so like understanding your operational environment. Yeah. It's, it's so it, important to teach them that. Yeah. Nobody thinks like that anymore. They, that's well, the, the more civilized we get as human beings, the, the further that goes away with us, they put it back in us, that yeah. instinct. Because I mean, you, we, we could feel that now. Yeah. I mean, you could see it walking up. Yeah. Because we had we had to go through every phase of all, all that out there just to hunt them down. I try to when you say you could feel it, the six senses are, is absolutely a real thing that gets trained. They mm-hmm. they they have like words like seal luck. You know they they have um the we, we have this expression that there are, there are no fair weather green braves because they already all died. Oh um, my gosh! But we we literally learn how like this instinct that we 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 start to believe in it, and um, I then I tell a story during selection where um, we have this stall course. It's just, we call it a long walk where you're, you're walking like maybe 30, 40 miles on this un, uh, on this land navigation course that's not self-correcting. And I hit a couple of points and uh, you know, I pull my, my, my compass out. I get my azimuth for what I think is my third point. And the wind is just like dead into my face, like dead into my face. I've been walking for maybe a mile or two and, uh, and I start smelling woman. Mm. Clear, I mean, like I hadn't smelled a woman in six months. And uh, I like check my compass skin and it's, it's, it's dead reckoning right on to my azimuth. This wind has hit me on my nose and that's a woman. I put my compass away and I ran flat out and I get to my next point and there's this old retired Vietnam green beret with his wife. She washed her hair, she conditioned her hair and she knew sure shit exactly what she was doing, which was all the senses that, that we as a civilized society have lost. Like, you know, we depend so much on our eyes. We forget about our nose. We, we, we don't even know why our hair sticks up when somebody's looking at us weird. Like, we know why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been 
we, we've learned by not dying that yeah. that is a real thing. But like those senses in the civilized society, they're there. They they can get woken up and they need to wake up. Yeah. Oh, you mask them with the stuff you put in your body. Yeah. And everything you put, eyes eat first, right? Yeah. Funny much says that all the time. And, 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 and that's true. But when you, <laughs> there's so much you can pick up. So and much you all, miss. Yeah, and so much. So you've got Sheepdog. Mm -hmm. What else are you doing? Oh, Apogee Strong Young Men Mentorship Program. Uh, like, young men are broken right now. You look at these these active mm -hmm. shooters, it's the same same thing over and over and over again. And uh, these young men are missing purpose. They've been emasculated. Society's telling them that, you know, like, they can't be rough. They can't go fight. They can't. And there's nothing more dangerous than than a broken man mm -hmm. you know where where masculinity is a beautiful thing and there's not a there's not a form of toxic masculinity there's just good masculinity and then there's brokenness right. and we have a generation of broken young men that are on drugs that are depressed that are playing video games that are being you know watching every single movie where they're executing people faces and like none of it's right and even worse is they're not out there learning how to to have their hands feel like this yeah. you know to like lay down at the end of the day and be tired that's the thing where your hands feel like they don't fit. You work so hard. Yeah. So how do you, or is that an, like an online mentorship or? So it's an online mentorship, but it is again, the, the Socratic approach. We are just guiding them. So they have to have a workout journal. They have to have a diet journal. I give that your books on it. Um, they get a reading list that has, you know, from Jocko to Chris Kyle to like, you know, like mm -hmm. Marcus Aurelius. And uh, then they have to give reports. They have interviews where we tie in a bunch of, you know, Bedrick Killian and, and um, like brilliant entrepreneurs and military professionals. They, they have to interview them. And then they have to do ARs after those interviews. And how do you change, like, we'll, we'll just like, how do you change the oil in a car? Yeah. How many of you guys in this, we break them up into teams, these like sure. almost ODAs. Like, do you, who doesn't know? Four kids raise their hands. Yeah. Cool. You guys, you other eight, that know how go teach and teach them. them how to do it. Marcus did that. Out. He does that when when Hunter was in high school and college. He would bring all of his friends, and Marcus would um, teach them, like teach one of them how to use the chainsaw or how to use the tractor or whatever it I was. I watched one of my daughter's friends not know how to pump gas. Oh my gosh, mm. <laughs> that's crazy! And so his thing was the one he taught needed to teach the next one and mm -hmm. the next one. And actually some of those boys are the I ones that are- I've done three days. That's when really you get good at where you can teach somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then have them pass down. We kind of step back. Yeah. I mean, you're going back old school with this kind of teaching. With the Stoics, yeah. you know, I think the, some of the best leaders we ever had come out of our history, man, were taught like that. You just had a bunch of solid guys who had been through it and figured that stuff out, had access to one spot. Yeah. So with the young men that are broken, are you only getting men that want to be fixed or are you recruiting men Both. that that need to be fixed? Yeah, so um, like Jesus didn't go, you know, in into the holiest of places. He was allowed there. He, yeah. he went to where the prostitutes and taxpayers were. Um, I, I am spending the majority of my time not with my kind. Yeah. Um, I am obviously in Afghanistan. I'm in Ukraine and our our guys are... We're not at departments that are wanting to send guys because those guys are coming anyways. Right. We're at departments where guys don't want to come and we're saying, hey, you need this training. We're at schools that are like, hey, you know, that's not really our bag. We're against like warrior tribe training. I was like, who are you now? Of course, statistically, this is what happens to schools like yours. Right. And uh, so. Did you ever have the gardener in the war or the warrior in the garden? Yeah. That whole phrase. Yeah. And it's like, man, yeah. that's a mindset when you're talking about warrior because we can you can shift us. Soldier, whatever you want to call us. There's been multiple names. Yeah. But what comes behind is discipline. Have I mean, you seen that? Sit in that. that uh, it's a mish, mish, I don't remember the, 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 the artist's name. It's a, it's a famous painting and poem. And it just has a guy kneeling and he's, he's tilling soil by hand. And you can just see his robe is just sticking out a few inches. And uh, what's the short blade, the katana? The, mm -hmm. the not full length samurai sword. It's like the shorter one. It's, like it's well, that's what's behind his back. Uh -huh. But he's sitting there on his hands and knees tilling tilling the soil with his bare hands. And it's like, would you rather have a warrior in a garden or a yeah. gardener as a warrior? And yeah. like for sure, obviously, just right. give me the warrior that can garden. And uh, That's us. Yeah. So you don't want to fight. <laughs> yeah. After everything we've been through. But I'll fight. I don't want to fight. There's a difference. Yeah. 
How there's there's a huge difference. Like when we're going out and looking for it, that appetite we had in the beginning. Well, that's why you had to train us. Because once you got that in you, then yeah. it's kind of in there, right? Yeah. And there, there's a huge difference between them dudes that, that don't want to fight and that but will throw down. And then the ones that don't want to fight but don't. Which one's scary? That won't. Yeah, right. So, and you you never know when it'll when it'll come out. Yeah. So that's the where the training comes in. So. So with Apogee Strong, then you have the Apogee program, which mm -hmm. is the actual school. And you have the Sheepdog training yep. them. Are you doing anything else other than the book? You got a gym? Yeah, we have a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym, uh, Gracie Maida Cedar Park. So I'm, I'm. There's Haleo Gracie who started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hoyler Gracie. There's a whole son. different topic altogether getting into yeah. that family line, bro. <laughs> we go for days. On, that's I'm fat. That, I love that family. Yeah. That I, I'm a Hoyler Gracie. Like Hoyler gave me my black belt. Oh, great. oh wow, Man, that's awesome, yeah. bro. So I, I, I have a Hoyler Gracie yeah, yeah, proper, like proper gym. That's like okay. there's a lot of tough guy gyms. This is like you. You have to wear a white gi. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to tie it right. Every like yeah, the tradition. Yeah, I'm big on that too. I'm here, in man. It. Big it. Big I'm in it. He grew up doing traditional yeah, I karate. Love it. I think it's so. Yeah. I try to tell these young kids, man. I was like, hey, look, when you when you started kindergarten and you graduated twelfth grade, you're a different human being altogether. Mm -hmm. Like when we put that white belt on, time you get that black one, you're a different human. Yeah. Same with us when we went through selection. You know as well as that was a big change. Yeah. Like when we come out of there with those tabs and those pins on after, and someone acknowledges that you've been, you're different. It, it completely changes your mindset. Well, that this back to broken young men. Like we had, we had so many opportunities and rites of pay passage for me. Like I, I can't, I don't know when I could say, man, I'm a man. Like I, I made kids before I was a man. You know, I was, I was a broken, all that violent rage and all of that, um, like testosterone and energy misguided, right? But then making it through selection and then going to another selection. Like, am, am I a man yet? I don't know. Like there were so many opportunities where I, I had my identity, like yeah. I wore it on my sleeve, right? And I had the pride in my flag. And, and, but most importantly, I had a purpose and that's so missing right now. Like, where is that? Where you know, this point. generation is like, am, am I a man? I remember wanting that acknowledgement from my father. Like, am I a man, dad? You know, yeah. like, and he he was so amazing, and he, you know he's a, he's a great dad and a, a perfect father, and he and he gave us those moments, but like now, where is that? Yeah, it's missing for sure. It's missing. Is that our well, fault? Well, in a lot or, of or what, who's fault? I mean, how did that happen? Have we been away? I mean, what the hell happened? How did we? How they get nice missed? times? It's nice right now. Well, and I think well, a lot yeah, of well, it is single that? moms too. A lot of broken There's families. A huge yeah. Yeah. amount of single moms, and when a a lot of moms are either working all the time and so they're absent. So there's really no parental role, even though she might, that's not what she wanted. And I'm not saying like a bad mom. I'm just saying yeah. a mom that just can't fill both roles. Those active shooters, almost every single one of them is missing a male masculine mm -hmm. figure in their lives. I was going to ask you, that's true. Almost yeah, every, every one of them? single one of them. Yeah. And so for those single moms, I think, you know, there needs to be a conversation of finding Boy a Scouts, male, yeah, football, finding martial arts. That's why we started that like, stuff. Have yeah, you ever wondered why we had all that stuff to begin yeah. with? There had to be a There's reason. There's a purpose. Yeah, there actually yeah. There absolutely had to be a reason to put that yeah. much effort into designing that. And it had to be to mold the young men. Yeah. When I, when I, when I messed up and, and I was, and I, and I got, and I lost to a guy that I, that I shouldn't have lost to. And I, I fuck, you know, and then my sensei walks back and cracks me over the back of the head with a scrim stick. And I look up at him. And then I look over at my dad. And my dad's gonna go fight him. And my dad just goes like this, I'm like, oh man, yeah. You know, like I needed that. Yeah. You know, and then like having my football coach grab me by or not, um, my, what was what was I wearing? What mask? Because I didn't even play football. Grab me and yells at me in my in my face. Like you can never do that now. Yeah. You know, like you go and you protect the rest of your teammates. Mm -hmm. What is this? I had to be on the wrestling mat. What? Where did that even? I grew. I had. I was a single mom. Um, I had Hunter when I was toughest job in the world. Nineteen, and I had my dad. Thankfully, that was um, a huge influence in Hunter's life. But then we met Marcus when Hunter was twelve. So that was also super huge. But y'all talking about sports, I never thought about it. But I had him in sports from the time he was three. He played t-ball, <laughs> then baseball yeah. and football, all the way until college and I, those coaches i do think that that was are a really saving big, lives yeah i've never thought about that human. until yep. now I mean, look to where you want them to go i mean it's, they're not hard to spot we're not hard to spot man you know what i'm talking about like yeah. it, it, it all you have to do is i know I, I said this earlier like we're gonna come to you and introduce ourselves but i mean we don't have any problem telling your kid yeah hey do this don't do that we don't have any problem doing that yeah. mm -hmm. 
learn that in the military by teaching them young kids when they would come in. Yeah, that's what that's how we got good at that. We need we need to, we need more coaches. Mm-hmm. We also need more kids. We have lowest uh, participation in sports. Yeah, in I heard America that. right now. I heard that. So we have fewer kids that are playing sports ever oh right gosh. now. So one of the recruiting problems is we have the 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 smallest population of eligible young men and women for service. They're fat. They're on drugs. They have criminal histories. So of of your even if you just did it per capita, if you just took a thousand, we have the lowest percentage of, of eligible people to serve in, in American history right now. Oh, eligible. Eligible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're enjoying the fruits. Yep. That's what's happening. Yeah, they're fat. They're fat and lazy. We were talking about earlier. It's like, yeah, when we were kids, how would you know if we were in actually in a, our, our paradise if it got invented? Well, mine was if I could see my buddy on my watch, right? That was kind of like high speed Star Trek stuff. Yeah. And then this communicator right here, you can touch a picture and it'll show up to the door. That sounds made up. Because we're hybrids, man. We were born in, in the old school and the new. The new kids, the, our kids, it's almost like we had to go through this together. Mm-hmm. Like we were learning the internet and social media. Yeah. And once tech came online, that was a game. That's completely different realm. And something that's born into that, they can't appreciate it. They don't understand it. They don't understand the difference, especially if you got something. The neck, we're sitting here saying, yeah, hey, this was, this was hard. When our kids are trying to explain Bitcoin to us. Yeah, man, what, <laughs> man, I'm talking about, man. I, we're well. like, what? You got in in the past two years, you're broke now. But if you got right. in 10 years ago, you're rich. That's right. Our yeah. son, uh, Hunter actually did get in when he was in yeah, high was school and I didn't even know. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. This younger generation coming online, I mean, if we're different, like I say, we're the X-Men, we're hybrids. Like there's something in us, but whatever it is. But the young ones, man, they got some skills I can't believe, right? Yeah. I watch them do yeah. stuff. I want to go down and train them, see them move, the way their hand-eye coordination, how smart they are. Chad's son. Hunter came to Ukraine with us and uh, we had to program all of our tech equipment for a full pace, like primary alternate contingent emergency, like full as encrypted as you can imagine. Full profile. Everything. Yeah. And uh, Hunter sat down and he worked straight for three days to program every single piece of equipment that we had on all four different platforms. Oh, wow. You know, and he he's he's a young, good looking, you know, that, like millennial or Gen Z. I'm not he's right on the precipice of the two. And uh so like as as quick as we do throw stones at at them, man, there's some gems. There really are. Dude. There are some we've gems. seen it too. Yeah. We've, there's some very like you're hard on me. We talk about I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. That's what I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna do that to you your whole life. I'm be yeah. hard on you. But that's because I know how I had to hear that line. You're gonna have to hear it from us, but they're real different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are know, real like, different. The 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 dad in the Great Depression, when that word started coming in in like the early '40s, that Jews are burning up and being murdered in gas chambers. Like, do you think there was a degree of hopelessness? Like, this generation can't do it. And then two years later, we're climbing cliffs and running up beaches. Yeah, check. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah. What were they before? Right. That's a great question. Yeah. That's why I can't ever judge anybody from back in the day, yeah. man. Like what they had to go through, how times were. Yeah. I mean, it says it, you know, in the Bible, and there's things just damn crazy and backwards. Men and women, men, you know, that's. Yeah. That's, they, I know that my parents' generation, same thing with Vietnam, they had to have been like these long haired hippies, but then they answered sure. the call. Yeah. You know, you got the Chris Christoff- Chris Christoffersons. Yeah. You know, and uh, the Roy Benavides. Dude. Oh my God. You know, gosh. like what they're a great there. Story. Yeah. yeah, they're in there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get to They just hate each other, I think. Like yeah. the baby boomers don't like it. That war messed them up. Yeah. It, it really did, man. I, when you look back at time where where the, the shift happened, it's right there. And Wasn't then, he then, from Austin, Benavides? No, he's, he's from El Paso. From, yeah, oh, West El Texas Paso. boy. Yeah. He yeah, he's a Texas boy though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah. There's some badasses in there, man. They just they just don't they don't get along with you. I didn't realize how long we've had you. Um so how long have we been going? We've, we've had him for 139. a long time. Oh. Yeah, uh, sorry. sorry. Um I think so sorry, can I say something real quick? Yeah. So I think earlier you were talking about like the media, right? Like why don't they like the cycle just so goes so quick and it's uh-huh. so fast. I think that that's our responsibility as podcasters and there's a lot of good shows out there to basically continue the message of like mm-hmm. what programs are out there. I love I love watching the influence that media once had continue to wane. Can you yeah. believe that? Oh man, you can see it. Yeah, it's, every it's day. Happening so uh, okay, I noticed that too. Every day, it's a I picked less. it up. I, I, 
There is, yep. and it's it's picking up on them. I don't know if they know that. They know it. Okay, no, they, they I have think they to. They know it. You think so? Now they're trying to control mm-hmm. podcasts. Yep, bro, it's it's bad for them, man. The media is about to get spanked. Yep. Yeah, I they've been getting spanked for five years on on the revenue side. No, no, no. I'm talking about like when people shift on them, see who's because who's causing all this yep. grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and staring mad at them yep. instead of just losing money where they people actually get because everyone's scared of them because they don't yeah. you know what those it's like the kid who can the popular kid who can yell yep. at you and you kind of but once people realize that they ain't Man, I mean, I mean, have you seen the? It's a four face photo. The, fr- the first one is just one guy standing up to the dictator, and the next picture is three guys around him standing up. Yeah, and the yeah, next picture all... is like the whole group, and then finally is the one dictator on his knees to the rest of the people. Oh, like wow. the people, mm-hmm. the people, we the people. The reason that that was so powerful is because we the people had all the power. Yeah, we were the people that they were scared of. We were the people that if you taxed us too much, we're gonna go pick up our guns and we're gonna go kill all of you. That, if you tax us on Christmas tea, night, yeah, come in. Your we're house gonna Christmas, Christmas night. Christmas night. We're gonna cross the river and <laughs> murder you in your you sleep. Kidding me? That's we who kept we are. That alive, man. That's still yeah. around. Don't forget that. That's oh who we are. I'm, 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 Sorry. You get him stirred up on that. Yeah. yeah. The media knows it's coming. Yeah. Po- but it is our responsibility to to like we the people. It's not just podcasters. It's the people's That's responsibility right. to keep that on the forefront. Like people are stopping. We have stopped talking about Ukraine. The new. The, the, the new on. Russia Ridiculous. is going to be at the NATO line. In our life, did you ever think, like yeah. we were alive for for the fall of the wall. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you you were not, we were alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and it. Were you? Mm-hmm. I'm 43. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now they own Belarus by proxy. The president is just a proxy for Putin. Like they own Crimea, they now are in Ukraine, and they're going to go all the way up to the river. They're going to once they get Odessa, they'll be able to take the rest of the Ukraine. Like the USSR of old will now be in our lifetime, all the way back to where they were. There next is Poland and Czech Republic. They're going to be looking at Romania and Finland. Mm-hmm. Like in Same our cycle lifetime, they always do. yeah, yeah. That, you track that war, how yeah. that happened, man. They, so when I they was played a, that game before. Yeah. When I was a kid, the girl that lived across Nobody's the street about from it. me, her. Like Spy. her parents were immigrants. Spy. <laughs> Could have been. Her dad was from Germany and her mom was from Hungary. What side of Germany? I don't know. But yeah. I remember <laughs> when the fall of the wall, like we watched it at her house. Was she like was this like, or was she like this? Oh no, they were excited. Okay. We're good. And so <laughs> that is why I specifically remember it because I mean they barely even spoke English. Yeah. And um it, I was probably nine, maybe. I don't remember what yeah. what year was that. Uh, 84, 84, yeah. 84? 84? 84, 85? Then I would have been a little younger than that. You uh, can't understand communism yeah. until you see communism. Yeah. Like, so, you know, like I was just seeing some Russians a couple of days or a week ago. You know, they got no teeth. Yeah. They, th- their uniforms are passing down three generations. Like, the, the guys that defect across um, the DNZ in Korea, when we finally get them, and we're trying to treat them. They have worms. They have like weird viruses in their blood. They have no teeth. That's poor bastards, like man. everything that, that communist yeah. touches, it destroys. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, we... 1989. I knew right. I was about nine. I was 10 years yeah. old. It was 1989. I was never good at math. Don't Thank worry about you. It. <laughs> I, we need, we need to get Joe Rogan, it. Jamie, that can yeah. try to pull that information. Exactly. I knew out. that. I, like, I can... I'm not your go-to guy on that. I'll give you the roundabout. Like, you <laughs> I want can that, picture I, myself in her living room. So I remember being about third, fourth grade or so. Sorry, I had to. Myself on that one. 1989, mm-hmm. fall the Berlin Wall. I was just jumping into the earth at that point. Great you know? year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just coming in. Was I was more, <laughs> a little younger. All right. Great summer. Okay, sorry. Tell us about your book. <sighs> well, we just been talking about it. Okay. Really. I so mean, it, everything that we yeah, just it's scars about. and the the book scars and stripes. But um, I did great name. Yeah, I I got a lot of both. That's good. And um, we collect them here. Yeah, we do. I was, I was telling you the other day, I was like, man, you know, we collect scars around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hope you guys go. And stripes. Yeah. You got quite a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a hard thing to, like, people, a lot of people don't understand the connection that they're they actually like, all, could be synonyms with, within the military. Yeah. Like, you can't have one without the other. Uh, <laughs> you can bet there is. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I tried to, as best I can, in the most transparent, vulnerable way, go through what it's, life to li- what it's like to live this extraordinary life. Um, so like, this is not like a pound your chest. I'm this rad person. It is, it is mostly my failures in really vivid detail. Um, lowest points of having a bunch of 
a couple of women pregnant, think I'm dying of AIDS, and I'm swimming due west a couple of miles out into the ocean into the oh, fog. Shit. Um, you know, getting blown up and uh, you know, everybody in front of me dying and thinking that's the end. Um, and all the mistakes that I made leading up to that. And it's that over and over and over again. And if you take a step back, the big arc is this chronological story of my life. The main storyline is like never quit. I love it. Keep swimming. We need to set up the actual world's most interesting man competition and start putting some of the guys that you're on the list for that. <laughs> my, I, I argue my buddy C Spray. Has he got it? Yeah, he's got it. Damn it. That's a good call sign, too. I was joking with some of the guys the other day. JT was telling us because there was, he had two two buddies. One of them was Evan could be on there. You'd be on there. You Jocko I mean? would be I'm on there. I think there should be a real competition for that. We got some interesting dudes, man. We, we'd have to have a, a pretty Instead objective of a competition. Panelist. I think you just like y'all all need to start doing <laughs> like, stuff together. We, we like, kind of do. We're like the unusuals have our own commercial. Yeah, yeah y'all all just need to start like once I mean, a year. Suspects. You get together and just. Your own little mastermind. Yeah, you know like I mean? a mastermind. Like a, yeah. Create your download. own cryptocurrency. Night of the round table. Right. Get I want a sword. Stoics in one area. Can I have a sword? Do we <laughs> yes, get swords? You can have Absolutely. a sword. Okay, I'm that in. All right, be, well, I'm in then. Yeah, I'm in. Be, like no, the, no sword. I'm out. And everyone can show up. It's, it's competition. It's the best one of those, by the way. The swag bag is a sword. So. Could you imagine that table? You'd Jocko, Evan, Matt, you, Sea Spray. I got my buddy. I bet we would put up. Would have to narrow it down to like twelve, and the amount of wisdom and mistakes that have been at that table. You know how hard we'd be laughing. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no business would be accomplished. <laughs> no, yeah. We should do the one. Have a multitude of questions. Ask each question to each guy to see what the answer is. Yeah. Same you, thing you do at your schools. I mean, it's kind of like what, what what would you do? What would y'all do in this situation? Oh, yeah. That's what I would do. Like yeah. I would be like, all right, gentlemen, I pose. Um, so Ukraine, here's what we're doing. What can I do better? Right. Like, could you imagine that? Because yeah. that's how nuggets. we do, that's how we breathe. That's what I'm saying. We like, always do it like that. Like, hey, brother. Like, hey, what do you think? Is this cool? Yeah. It is. But do this, man. See, what, what do you think about cool that? Right there? <laughs> that like, oh, I never even thought yeah. about that. It's awesome. That's yeah, just what I'm saying. Y'all need like a round table right? of like just downloads, debriefs, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Y'all just get together and share your thoughts at least once a year. The funniest part is the screw ups because the way guys get into it, he's like, you can't believe what happens. Yeah. I, and like, well, you never see it. The way we get that happens to us is the God thing. It's like funny, I guess. I don't know. But the stories that come out of that, like, how did you get into that, man? How did you even get into that? Oh. Speaking of God, I just have to ask, are, are you a believer? Oh yeah. Okay, I yeah. figured with Michael W. Smith. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So from um, man, I, I stepped away for almost two decades. Uh, my best friend died when, in a car crash when I was fifteen, and I was a very destructive kid from fifteen till really selection. And then um, when I made it to the teams, uh, then I was a narcissist, and uh, the the team like pounded all of that ego out of me for a while, and uh, but I still hadn't figured it out. And then I got on the team life. You know, I got trips abroad and beautiful places with all the authority and power, which is a bad combo for um, a selfish prick. Um, and it wasn't until my marriage was like on the rocks that I called Chad. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, well, when was the last time you walked into a church? I was like, man, I can't walk into a church. He's like, well, why not? I'm like, well, God and I, I need Jesus to explain to me why I've seen so many little girls dead and raped to death and I've seen so many burning bodies. Like when I can have that explained to me, then I'll figure out why I can walk when I can walk into church. It's like, well, maybe you could talk to him about that. Like, no, why aren't you just so scared? Good for you, Chad. <laughs> Who the hell even talking to you, man? <laughs> well, where do you think you talked to him about those yeah. things at? I'm like, yeah, I don't know, bro. He lives around here. He does. He's super close. He's thirty minutes from here. Guys have dropped that straight logic on you, man. You need know, to hate him. him. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Just speak the truth, right? Yeah, those well, you guys. You want to live in a lie, though. Oh well, yeah, I know. I'm, hey, I, bro, I was got the same way you did. Yeah, like she does the like... foundation that um, boss mentors at. Yeah, Mighty, Mighty Oaks. Yeah, Mighty yeah. Oaks. They're great, man. I've mm -hmm. I've I've been to one personally. Oh yeah. yeah. There's so many. Oh my guys, are, there's so many out there, mm -hmm. and that's the best part. Is like because we, like I said, we trickled out, man. These guy kind of got in their own little deal. Like, what can I do? You know? And then yeah. they got really good at it. Then you started hearing about them, and now that we're getting connected, the older we get, you know, we all got money now. We yeah. can go do things. Got kids on the ground; they're growing fine. Kind of getting stable, I guess. Yeah. Getting our battle rhythm in here, I, man. There, there's a wave coming. 
When you got well, Mike yeah, well. Glovers and Evans and Matts and JTs and yeah. Hughes and Morgans yeah. and Jockos, where like we are now becoming not just powerful and rich and connected, but again, realizing our purpose. And men like you that get a purpose, that is a mm -hmm. that's a dangerous is, thing. We have found ours in church. And I mean it's I've always been Marcus has always been we've all Ugh, I can't talk. We have always been believers, but it wasn't really until we just committed ourselves yeah. um, a year ago. And there's, we have found a whole new purpose. I love being back in a town. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot what that was like. Yeah. He mows the yard I, I forget at the church. what that was like, man. We forget about all that. Marcus yeah. is the groundskeeper. You know cool here. it is to go to Costco's? Like, we go on dates to Costco's, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know how great that is, man. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, uh, you forget how fat the stuff that we would do over there. I mean, that's a. I've been back six. This was the first time that I've had a week in my bed with my wife in a year. Oh my oh, gosh. Well, you know, and, that's uh, hard. You guys need a vacation. Yeah, that's not, not in, the, in the table yet. We're working on it. Oh my god. I'm just throwing it out there, bro. She's a trooper. <laughs> how long have you been married? 15 years of September. Damn. Oh, nice work. That's awesome. Good job. I want to meet her. She is. She is fierce. I love that. Yeah. Like, hey, we're just keep, keep every, recruiting everybody to Texas. All of our guys in yeah. Texas, and we're throwing this out there. Should veterans, should we unionize? How powerful would that be? <laughs> so I, we, I, I've kicked around like Evan and I were talking. Or whatever about you it. want to call it, whatever yeah. that is. It like the 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 count the phone the, the council of elders where like when the thank you when the phone rings Dude. and we say pick pick an issue pick a topic whatever it is yeah and we're like we're uniting on this issue yeah that's it. You can't stop us. I, like every, everybody I bring that up to, they get this grin on their face veterans. like that was the best yeah. idea. I was like, man, why don't I don't know why we you know how we can make it work. Same way with by the time I'm done, you just walk in with that car to any hospital. So it'd basically be like the modern day VFW, like whoever's in charge of that or Legion of just pull those legs. I was thinking more it. like Al Capone, uh, Al Capone with the mob. Don't even get but that's like, what I'm saying. Maybe our little mafia would be great. Like, <laughs> you gotta remember who you're talking about over here. Talk about that out loud. Yeah, about yeah, of course. We're gonna have drums and machine guns. And the... <laughs> oh no, they're they're figuring it out. Marcus has always wanted, like, in every state, no matter where you are, for there to be like this secret house that anybody. We have that. I want that for everybody. That. Though. Like for yeah, we absolutely they have could that. go to or whatever. He talks about that. I'm like, oh, that'd be. Fun. We have the best fraternities and the fact that we're connected to the other side too it's like hey man we can go, I can go more, anywhere more so than ever in history ever, ever, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely 100 i do we, think it's because we have to fight together yeah but marcus and morgan were in a fraternity in college and they've really taken that kind of mindset um of six graders guns that's what they call it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and brought it i mean obviously you had it in the teams and everything but taking that out and as veterans i mean that neighborhood down the street is half his fraternity brothers and half his seal team brothers yeah. it's so funny like they all are all together kids are running they're all together. pod that's awesome we get to hang out because our kids are hanging out <laughs> together it's like yeah hey, i'm gonna take the kids over here and let them yeah. learn something we just <laughs> hang out with the boys it's fantastic that little crew i talked about in my neighborhood we spent all yesterday afternoon after church with uh a Kubota fixing our motorcycle track for the backyard that's what i'm talking about that's great boys. stuff right yeah, yeah the rc yeah, or the motorcycle really track yeah. in the back yeah. <laughs> Every, awesome. All of our buddies my, my got some kind of rides at one ten right now. I love that. So much fun, dude. Best and he did it. Huh? He rips <laughs> it. Sure That's awesome. Man. Seven. That's, That's awesome. so fun. I just learned like five years ago how to ride. That's right. My knees are still fun. looking at those. My so two fifty. Fun. Like I hate you. Yeah. Oh my god. That's what Morgan does. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like he loves that. that. He did a dirt bike. Track a little his... pit bike kind of. Mm. Oh. Give me too much power, man. I will use it. I'll kill myself. That's right. No. <laughs> That's oh. why I put my foot down. I don't let Show him have do it. half the things that Morgan does because <laughs> Marcus would kill himself. I'll freaking do it, man. I'll get in there. I, it, get, it starts to get good. You know how it is. Full it starts to get good to you, and you're like, oh, okay. He just he won't slow down. He doesn't know caution or anything. He so it's, 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 it's been burnt. Like the, yeah. that thing in our heads, like that thing's killed. They killed that t 15 years ago. Yeah. Literally when they're like, you're at 30,000 feet altitude, light is green. Yeah. You'll yeah. never get that out of there. No. -uh. Well, that's why I'm <laughs> that's full Luckily my body breaks down. <laughs> that's probably why our bodies break down. No, yeah. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. To slow that down. Yeah. Because yeah. man, there's nothing to slow me down greater than when them knees start, you know, like I'm walking through those pearly gates and the, the, that beater, the drag it in, right? Off, you know, <laughs> like, I can't let this in. One hundred percent, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
You can either turn me back or let me in. You can drive me by my foot. Yeah. Awesome, dude. So funny. Isn't that funny? Okay, so how do we promote your book? Where do people find it? How do people find you? I mean, it's 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 uh all the places where you know big books are sold, okay. and uh, and Amazon is probably where everybody buys books from. Scars and Stripe. It's wild. We have like a thousand ratings. We have a thousand five star ratings, and the nice. only not the people that didn't like it obviously didn't read it. And they're just like, "Fuck Tim Kennedy." Oh my gosh! <laughs> like, Thanks. Okay. Yeah, great. You review. gotta have one out of five thousand. Yeah, no, that's not gotta, a bad odd. Gotta have them. And then, man, supporting Save Our Allies, you know, the um, the the things that, that we're doing in Ukraine right now, are, are they're, they're indescribable. Um, when I came back, I was literally like holding the hand of a four-year-old who doesn't have parents, mm. you know, like coming into Poland. Um, Is that, they're, are they still going in there, right? Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I have a question. Yes, um, do you know of any organizations that are in the Ukraine that are looking like adoption agencies because i have had a lot of friends ask that that want to adopt kids the u.s makes it impossible so yeah. to adopt i tried um, to be an afghan kid but did you yeah they should um, be kidnapping oh my gosh yeah so i left it so through <laughs> save our allies I leave there. <laughs> through save our allies if you hear of any okay. adoption will you let us know yeah my wife said no more she like cut cut me out so i'm trying to yeah i would have i would have all the kids so i'm now trying to circum- fun man yeah i'm trying to circumvent her uterus when you see him start <laughs> learning <laughs> and like doing it yeah right circumvent the sorry circumvent yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me a little black kid from louisiana like like, trying to do man i was like dude i will have you kids to leave these suckers i'll train them up give me a fire team and one of them man they will be badasses like you can't believe man oh my god my kids are rad yeah, like I'd brag all night, all this like for another ten hours or however, however long. You yeah, can that's awesome. Talk about my kid. Aww. That's how you know is you're supposed to be there. Yeah, because when you can start talking about, like, we get talked about them the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And, and and just the, I get that now. We didn't have, we didn't have that back in the day. I, I feel like that's it's awesome, man. I yeah, love thanks that. for coming out here and doing how that. Do, uh, give us your social media handles. It's uh, Tim Kennedy or Tim Kennedy MMA. It's one of the okay. It's mostly Tim Kennedy MMA. I think not okay. hard to find. No, I am. Yeah, like a million something followers on the Instagrams and Facebooks, yeah. and congratulations with all that. After everything, coming yeah. back and then stepping into that that world was brand new for us, especially with the UFC. Man, that's that's hardcore, bro. I feel like you really outdid me on that one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I've been thinking Kennedy about it. I kind of bitched out. I didn't. I, 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 I love that's impressive. All you guys that go into that arena, man, because it is that, that's good stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not joking. Most of the guys on the team. W- could have gone and fought professionally you know the uh the, the level of athletes and the pedigree of guys that are on the teams are people just don't understand uh, like do you uh, want to go yeah, play never, never will. You you never know, will. Like, go play nfl yeah, yeah. they go play nfl like if they want to go be pro fighters they go pro, be pro fighters but they choose to do this it's the hardest thing to do yeah that ought to let you know like and i remind myself that all the time especially with the younger ones i was like hey man they could have done anything they wanted anything anything you, the, the, some of the guys that they sit in there, I tell, she says this too, man. Those, those are the ones we say, hey, they're break glass in case of war. You don't want to talk to them. You don't hang out with them. You yeah. don't want to see them in town. Yeah. Now, he has some friends that come by. I mean, like, they're freaking monsters. <laughs> you, you know, we worked with I mean, I, you know what I'm talking about, man. And then uh, I just want everybody else to know that they exist. Yeah, they're out there. And then you got the, the Ivy League guys, like, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah. smooth. Looks <laughs> like a banker, man. Like, What's up, man? Yeah. Wears the asshole shirt all the time. I mean, we got them every yeah. single from uh, both dynamics. What a blessing that was to be in that fraternities, man. To, to play like that, for sure. Luckiest job in the world. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you, you so much Enjoy. for coming.